Good afternoon and welcome everybody. This would be the Jeff Cameron Show right here on 97.9 ESPN Radio and a fine libations Friday to you and yours. I'm Jeff, that's Tom. We're online, ESPNTallahassee.com. That's where you go to listen live via the streaming free always. Don't miss anything. If you do, remember we'll post all three hours of the program, both to iTunes and in our own audio vault. Upon the conclusion of the show, you can email us if you want. A lot of great emails lately. JCS at 979ESPNRadio.com. You can find me on Twitter at Jay Cameron Show. WTSM app. Good for your mobile devices. You know, I haven't had a good cigar in a while. I'm thinking I'm going to have a cigar. Hey, now. I'm going to have a cigar tonight, Tom. Really? Or tomorrow. Okay. You don't fancy a good cigar every now and again? No. Can't do it. Yeah. I haven't had one in years. Like, literally probably two years. I used to have uh, several a year. No, I'm not saying it's a good habit or anything like that. I'm not, I mean, I just like a good cigar. I haven't done one in a long time. And it's weird. Isn't it weird? My brain is just strange. Right when we started the show, it hit me. Right, literally just now as we were doing the intro, I thought, I would really like a good cigar. It just blurted out. I know it's random. One of my favorite memories from somebody we used to work with was that uh, they enjoyed uh, the cigar, and uh, they enjoyed it on a deck they weren't allowed to enjoy it on, and they were told to stop. And they looked the person who told them to stop in the eye and said, absolutely, I'm so sorry. And then not any more than five minutes later, lit lit right back up on the same deck and uh, said, screw you, basically. That is really kind of fantastic and terrible, but it's fantastic. (laughs) While the person told him to stop, looked through the window, Uh, and was incredulous. Just couldn't believe it, right? Just, is that actually happening? And you were there. Yes, I was. But also something else happened on that day, if I recall. (laughs) That is a, a guy that we both love just spilled his drink all over oh a box of cigars, right? No, that, well, that happened uh, some, mean, <laughs> some time later. <laughs> that is still one and of the great ones. I was too. told to terminate this person's uh, un, you know, internship, it, yeah. his, his unpaid internship. Because he spilled a drink on his cigars? Yes. <laughs> which I did not. That's which ridiculous. I did not. That was a separate time. No, we were actually at, at USF for that instance. Oh, that is one of the all times. Yeah. That is one of the all time. We were there for a uh, a broadcast at this place. Yeah. So you can you know if you know the show well, you got a few candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, the guy was told in no uncertain terms. I, how many times have I have I told you not to do that? <laughs> Just was the first one, and he's I, absolutely. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then a couple minutes later, chica. All right. <laughs> That is, and you were probably sitting there in awe. Yeah, you were there. I don't recall. You go, that's that. ridiculous. I don't recall that. <laughs> it makes me laugh though. Yeah. And and given who that person was, it's now good that that happened. Like, yeah. No, I mean the other guy. I'm not siding with the owner here. Right. Hey, screw that guy. Yeah, they were both. Uh, yeah, they shaky. Had their, yeah. They were shaky upon shaky, just looking at each other. Shaky looked at shaky. It's the Spider Man thing. Just pointing at each other. As it turns out, that's a classic. Two inside words. Regulars trade. <laughs> <laughs> You're that killing is, my business. Oh, that is so good. Oh, man. Florida State plays an important baseball series this weekend against Clemson, and I know Martin can break the record, and that's cool, and that's going to happen, and uh, good, good, good. But uh, it's a huge series against Clemson because uh, we're battling for a top eight national seed um, tops, I, you know, to, you want to host all the way throughout, and Florida State's RPI is what eleven, and Clemson's ten. I think that's it is. correct. Yeah. Yes. So uh-huh. there you go. You know, speaking of baseball, and and since I'm talking baseball, we'll get right to it. I was looking at uh, basically at the end of each month. You know, you kind of take inventory, take stock with baseball. I'm talking about professional baseball right now. Um, you know what I didn't know either. Uh, and and I've heard a couple analysts bring this up, that a lot of managers, when they have a heavily favored team, a team that's talented and is supposed to win the division, make a run into the postseason, whatever it might be, um, they look at the first 40 games as whatever. They understand that there are a lot of variables involved that won't be involved moving forward after you get through these first 40 games. 
such as the start to a season, people's bats aren't as fast as they're going to be later on when they they get loose and they get used to it and playing every day and your body adjusts and the weather warms up. And that's a big part of it. The that weather is warms huge. Huge. Yes. So if you're kind of not playing as well as you need to, say, say you were mm, hanging around 500 and you're a team that could win 100 games, that's when managers would come in and say at the 40-game mark, all right. You've had your warm-up period. We're done here. Let's start kicking ass. Let's get locked in. I'm not fooling around anymore. That that was the time period after 40 games. I, a, I didn't know that. I thought that's interesting. Because I don't know how you are. What's your marker for judging what your team is well, or is not? Okay, so the Mets, for the first time in franchise history, had 17 wins or more uh, on April? May 1st. Oh, yeah, yeah by yeah, May 1st. Yeah. I don't know what that means. That's not good. You know, there's a lot of question marks. A so lot of question marks still, yeah. You get to around 100 games, and now... Well, 100 games? Good Christ, man. You're, I mean, there's only 62 to play. No, but, I, well, when you're dealing in a division, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's loaded. If you're a favorite, you'll know. But if you're a team that's questionable, by 100 games, I have an idea of whether or not you're actually going to be a contender into August, September. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Yeah, I I don't think you need 100 games. I think by, you know, at the time you roll close to the All-Star break, you've got a pretty good feel that your team is or is not a contender. You've got to understand my team gets hurt all the time. Yeah, you got a weird team. I guess that is true. I mean, Jacob DeGrom extended, hyperextended his elbow at the plate, and he was drafted as a position player. Yeah. So he's not And he's going to make his next start. He's okay. Well, Apparently. Until the third inning, and he's done for the year. That's how, <laughs> that's how we roll, but yeah. Yeah, your training staff is something to be... Desired. That's uh, mm. hilarious. Leaves something to be desired. So that's why I wait until June or July when yeah. I go, oh, well, all right, this is nice. Jeff, they're in the World Series. I'm thinking we got a shot here. <laughs> kind of happened that way in 15. I mean, that, that's hilarious. Uh, anyhow, yeah, no, I don't, I don't need 100 games. I, I think I'm probably – well, the Pirates, if we're just talking about our teams here for a second, the Pirates are weird. They're, they're a few games over 500 despite getting swept by Washington in a four-game series, and yet I don't believe in them at all. No, I mean, not even a little bit. I have no idea how the hell entering that Washington series, they were 17 and 11. Yeah. I, I don't even know where that comes from. No, I'm the same way. So we just got dismissed by the Braves, which you can hear right here. Which right now, by the way, if you're a Braves fan, seriously, we do carry the Braves here on 97.9 ESPN Radio. And I'm going to tell you something now. I enjoy watching and listening to the Braves. This team is a good team. They're a young, fun team. They're a dynamic team. I like watching them. I do. I'm catching myself all the time just kind of investing into the Braves. And I'm, I'm a Pirates fan for life. We'll now never waver on that. No, I don't want the Braves to do better than the Pirates. Of course not. But I can appreciate when teams are up and coming and they're on the cusp and maybe they're a little ahead of schedule. And the Braves are ahead of schedule. And listen, I, I don't know. You know, Braves fans who are cautious, they'll come up to you now that we carry these games and they'll say, Oh, I've enjoyed listening to the Braves. I'm glad you guys are carrying them. And, and, you know, they're playing quite well, so it's been fun, you know. The second you try to pin them down on, what do you think? I mean, they're ahead of schedule. What do you think? Oh, no, no. They're not. They're, they're too young. They're not going to contend. This is a great start, and it's fun to watch. But no, no, no. They don't want to believe it yet. They don't want to buy in yet because it makes you nervous when you got something to lose. Yeah, well, of course it does. And um, this is supposed to be a nothing-to-lose year where if they make the wild card, you know, that's a fun run. Right. But, I mean, when your top prospect, the top prospect in the bigs comes up and he does nothing but just dominate, show out. Just dominate over right. and over again. And then word is in their system, they've got arms on the way in the next year or two. So Yes, some of the Braves' young arms are about to break in. No, it's going to flip. Uh, it's going to be the Braves, the Phillies with the Nationals contending, and then uh, we'll see what Jeter does in Miami, and then the Mets are going to fall off. They've got a couple years left. I mean, I, I don't believe in the Mets. Right now, they've got... Two good pitchers. One's an ace, and he just hyperextended his arm, so we'll see how he does. Syndergaard is a good pitcher, but he's not an ace right now. You need both of those guys to be dominant for the entire summer because nobody else is doing Jack you-know-what. So the Braves are in a good spot right now to contend for a wild-card berth at minimum. Washington, it seems, is getting its stuff together, especially after playing you guys. But who knows? If Washington dilly-dallies for another month, the Braves could be in control of this thing by the All-Star break. It's fun to see. I enjoy watching good young talent emerge ahead of schedule and give fans a reason to believe in something they didn't think was coming uh, this particular season. I like that storyline when it happens anywhere. You know, um, Minnesota last year. Yeah, it's, it's just a cool thing. 
You know what else is cool? And, and you don't even have to like baseball to, to appreciate this. You know, I was talking about Florida State and Clemson, and, and, you know, we're thinking about the weekend that is. And, by the way, congratulations, graduates. But, you know, sometimes with the modern analytics that we use and the numbers and the metrics that we use to gauge players, teams, what they are, what they aren't, pitching staffs, hitters, all that stuff, the human element of the game gets lost. And that can be, you know, it's funny in Moneyball where, you know, we brought this up before. Oh, you watch the games? You know, that that kind of stuff is scary to me because that's the innocence of the game. That's your childhood. That's Little League Baseball. That's They play the games. You go to the games because you always, you don't know. You don't know maybe on a random Tuesday if somebody's going to do something outside of those sets of numbers. Um, they're they're going to have a day for the ages. They're going to go four for four and give you a chance to win a game that, statistically speaking, or using analytics with the pitching matchup, you really have no chance to win. You know, uh, we don't hit lefties well, they do this well, whatever it might be. But you go see the game. It's as Kirchin always brings up, right? That, but, but still, even knowing that, when you become very aware of what a guy is because of those numbers, very specific, what he is, what he doesn't do well, what he does do well, and the player that he is, you so seldom see that guys transform who they are despite that knowledge, right? So so a GM might go up to somebody and say, listen, this is what you are. You, you know, you can't hit lefties. You can't. I mean, we've got eight years here, or you don't walk. You don't. You don't walk. You're each row. You don't walk. And you know what? If you're going to stay in this lineup or in this league, you better, you know, do whatever this hit is. Hit 290. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is, right? But sometimes people do. People do change. Sometimes players absolutely transform. Daniel freaking Murphy. Who they are. Yeah. Didi Gregorius, you talk about a transformation of plate discipline and what this could mean. Okay, so I read this. That Jim Bowden put this out there. Okay, this is impressive. Gregorius walked a whopping 18 times, 18 and 121 plate appearances. Because last year he walked 25 times the entire season. Oh, wow. So in the month of April, 121 plate appearances, he walked 18 times. Last year he walked 25 times in 570 plate appearances. The year before, he walked 19 times in 597 plate appearances. So... You never see a staggering adjustment to approach at the plate by an established major leaguer who did whatever he did to get there and become a starter, an everyday guy with the most storied franchise in history. Yeah. Radically alter who he is as a player. And his commitment to it is so seldom seen because he doesn't have to. Right. He's slashing 327, 421, 735 with a league leading 10 home runs and 30 runs batted in with this newfound patience. He's become the best shortstop in baseball. That's that, Now, that's cool to me, and I hate the Yankees. Right, growth. It's just cool to see that those kinds of things can happen. I mean, so now he's in that con- – I, I, you know, I just randomly threw it out there that he's the best. But, yeah, he's in the conversation right now with Carlos Correa and Lindor and – Machado, and I mean, you have to talk about him that way if he's going to do that, if he's going to be that kind of a guy. I don't know why I get so buoyed by things like that, but I am. I'm buoyed by things like that. I like to see people change who they are for the better within the game, and it's not something that happens all that much, and you get to, with the modern analytics, to a place where you can just say, well, this is what they are, this is what he is, and there's, it's just not going to change. That's why I watch Rocky Four every year. <laughs> You Soviet can Union can change. I can change. You can change. We can all change. I know. I'm just saying it's maybe cheesy, buddy, but I'm heartened by those kinds of stats. <laughs> and I take inventory at the end of the month, and I'm looking at all these different numbers, and I came across that, and I went, look at you, D.D. Gregorius. I feel like a PowerPoint slideshow is coming after this. See, so with, with our corporate approach, what we can do <laughs> yeah. is model after this. <laughs> Uh, I hope he goes back to being the guy that refuses to walk. I've seen it can happen for you, D.D. Let's go back to not doing that, man. I don't need the Yankees to be yeah, any good. Yeah, they found the new hole in your swing. Yeah, good I mean, luck. Good. God, the Yankees are going to be good if all these guys meet their potential. It's scary to think about. 
but we saw it happening. Sometimes teams, they surprise you out of nowhere, but given where the Yankees were and the 40-something, 40-somethings that Cashman had on the roster, we were watching them trade off pieces and get top prospects right before our eyes as yeah. they were trying to get under a certain salary number. Yeah. And we're like, well, this wait a minute. This is troubling. Stop. They're, they're loading up. Well, and Stop the presses. For me, I should be angry because of that, A, and B, a great example of two guys, at least early on, but it happened all of last year for one of them, former Pirate pitchers. I mean, Charlie Morton is now a guy missing bats at a higher rate than almost anybody in the league. I mean, Charlie freaking Morton. Charlie Morton was in Pittsburgh forever. You probably never thought of him, ever. Correct. Mm -hmm. One of the best pitchers in baseball now for Houston, just like Garrett Cole is apparently. God, talk it, For who? Yeah. Sorry, boys. I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. TNT. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Our specials daily and happy hour all day on Friday. The Hobbit American Grill. Tee it up at the Edwin Watts Golf Shop's 50th anniversary sale this Friday through Sunday. Score three dozen Srixon Tri-Speed Tour Balls or two pairs of Ben Hogan shorts for just $50. Take $50 off the Callaway 200 Rangefinder, and when you trade in your old clubs, you'll get a 50% trade-in value bonus towards your new club purchase. Some manufacturer restrictions apply. And while you're there, register to win a $500 shopping spree. Only at Edwin Watts, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers since 1968. Say what? Say what? It's the boy Big Snoop D-O-double-G. And I got a very special message to the players. That's right, to the males. Sexual performance issues are more common than you think. Maybe not for me, but probably for you. Over 25% of new ED cases are guys under 40. So what do you do if you suffer from ED? Go to 4 the wellness brand for men, so you can look good, feel good, and perform well in the bedroom. You dig? Thanks to science, E to the D can be optional. Say, man, don't be embarrassed. Guys should take better care of themselves. Look good, feel good, live good, like me. It's $5. $5 to try it out, man. And it comes right to your crib. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't meet me there. Beat me there. Go to 4 slash love. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash love. For him slash Love. Go. You're listening to The Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Well, it's sort of our send-off to Crenshaw Lakes. Ogilvy, Oglesby Union being torn down and modernized, and uh, that means goodbye, Crenshaw Lanes. And man, I could get choked up if I talk about this too much. I've spent... Some quality time at Crenshaw Lanes uh, and had some uh, of the most fun nights of my life hanging out with friends and people at Crenshaw Lanes while I was a student and all the years after and and just, yeah, man. 
those tournaments are incredible, and uh, you were a part of a, a ruse not too long ago at Crenshaw Lanes, where my whole family surprised me, came up yeah, to Tallahassee, you were right, down from Atlanta right, for my yeah. 30th birthday. It was a, a fake business transaction that or that was going to take place. <laughs> Bill was involved. With yeah, that like too. they wanted to make a buy with the station, and I had to be there. Yeah, and you it was had such, to be there. I was supposed to leave for Atlanta. Yeah, I couldn't let you leave. Right, so I had to go to the stupid meeting. Well, and, I had to call around and ask people, how am I going to convince Tom not to leave to go right. to Atlanta? Yeah. Next thing I know, my brother-in-law is walking like, did he get divorced? Why is he Why in is Tallahassee? He in Tallahassee? <laughs> yeah, you were nervous. I was nervous. Yeah, <laughs> Justin, what is, what's going on here? What's yeah. going on at the yeah. union? <laughs> Well, we have our bowling tournament over there, and Mike and the guys and everybody, and goodness gracious, it's been, golly, I had so many great nights over there, so many good times. It's not that there won't be more bowling at Florida State. They'll be building another bowling alley, but Crenshaw Lanes closes tomorrow. And, today, uh, the fourth. Today. Oh, is it today? Is it yeah. today? Damn it, man. I don't. That snuck up on me. I, I didn't realize that was happening right freaking now. Listen, it does need to be modernized over there. There's no doubt. Uh, uh, but, you know, with it goes memories and yeah, certain things that you can just look at. When I go over there now, certain things I just look at take me back instantly. Sure. And that won't happen now when it changes. No, so. for, uh, before health economics, uh, my junior year of college, we used to go to Crenshaw, go bowl, have a couple of pops, and then go sit because the attendance was mandatory. So that made it easier on ourselves. Different by going era to, of going to school. Where you're going we, to, yeah, yeah. Well, you're bowling for five bucks. Outstanding. That was the best. I loved Crenshaw. It, it captured the collegial spirit. Yes. Last call before the wrecking ball. That's what they had posted for the entirety of uh, the buildup to this big day, man. And that's it. So we salute you. Crenshaw Lanes and all that have walked the hallowed halls of Crenshaw Lanes. A lot of good people. A lot of really good people, including some that are no longer with us. So, Dolphin of the Cap wanted to get this in on a short segment and at least acknowledge the closing of Crenshaw Lanes. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 97.9 ESPN Radio. Sorry, boys. I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. this. Landowners? Your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man, how you guys doing today? It's an awesome setup here at Truck and Car Concepts. You come in here, it's your one-stop shop. You can get it all taken care of. Window tinting, pinstriping, graphics, you name it, Truck and Car Concepts does it. And we've also got those bolt-on accessories that makes the truck look nice. We've got grill guards, we've got brush guards, stainless steel Nerf bars, lifetime warranty on those. And again, the spray and bed liner is going to make it worth your while. You're talking about putting a few of these things on there, and you're going to increase the value of that vehicle. Well, you will. And, and not only are you going to do that, but you're going to make it look nice. It's going to customize it for your own personality and your own wants and needs. Some guys like it jacked up. We also do lowering kits. There's only one place in town's going to be able to truck it up then. That's right. That's Truck and Car Concepts. Truck and Car Concepts. One block east of Weems Road on Mayhan Drive, across from Kraft Nissan. Call 656-8800. Come on, say it with me. 656-8800. 
I'm Fred Conrad, and I'm a criminal defense lawyer. For almost 20 years, I've been practicing DUI law in Tallahassee. Did you know if you're arrested for a DUI in Florida, your driver's license will be suspended regardless of whether you refuse a breath test or if you give a breath sample over the legal limit, and you only have 10 days from the date of the arrest to contest the suspension. Did you know in Florida, a DUI conviction will stay on your record for the rest of your life? If you've been arrested for a DUI, don't blow it. Call my office and talk to me today, 222-4005, or visit my website, fredconrad.com. I'll personally handle your case. Could you turn that down a little, please? Hello, my name is Jim Smith, and I'm the owner of Poor Paul's here in Tallahassee. First, I want to thank you all for stopping. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm here on the Capitol steps and why I don't have any clothes on. Because you're a pervert. Uh, l- let me explain. <laughs> this is being recorded for a Poor Paul's radio commercial, and I think if I record it totally nude, people will pay more attention to my message. <laughs> Business is great at Poor Paul's, but I still have one small problem. I'll say you do. My problem is that in spite of having free Gumby's pizza and $4.95 pitchers every Sunday and Monday night, free beer and free mixed drinks for our lovely ladies every Tuesday night, and other great money-saving specials every other night of the week, some of you are still going to other bars. Bars whose owners would never bear their souls, so to speak, as I am. So I'm simply asking for your business so poor Paul's can grow. I see something else that needs to grow. Ah, uh, this isn't working. Hand me that towel, please. I have a hanky. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. The Western Conference takes over in the NBA playoffs tonight here on ESPN Radio. Our coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. For Game 3 between the Warriors and the Pelicans in New Orleans... Golden State leads the series 2-0. That game to be the first of a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. The nightcap will be Game 3 for the Rockets and Jazz in Salt Lake City. That series tied at 1. Last night in Toronto, another epic performance by LeBron James. 43 points and 14 assists, doing most of his damage from the outside as the Cavaliers grabbed a 2-0 series lead on the road against the Raptors. ESPN's Brian Windhorst. There was a certain point where LeBron was like, I wonder how crazy I can get with this. I wonder if I shoot the ball 18 feet in the air, if it'll go in. I wonder if I turn to my left, it'll go in. I wonder if it'll turn to my right, it'll go in. He was just completely having fun with them. And uh, look, there's going to be certain nights where LeBron's just going to throw in shots and you're just going to have to shake your head and you know, give it to him. Brian Windhorst on Golick and Wingo. The Milwaukee Bucks may meet with as many as 10 coaching candidates in their first round of interviews. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reports among those the Bucks will interview are former Hornets coach Steve Clifford, former Pelicans coach Monty Williams, and Spurs assistant Ettore Messina. Angels first baseman Albert Pujols needs one hit for number 3,000. The team starts a five-game road trip tonight with the first of a three-game series in Seattle. Golf, Tiger Woods shoots a two-over 73 today with only one birdie on his last hole of the day. The ninth, Woods right on the projected cut line at two-over par. Live from the Amerigas Propane Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. It's Libations Friday. Brought to you by Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill. Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill on Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Let me take I forgot. Not that I care at all, but the Kentucky Derby is this weekend. Is that right? That is correct, yes. You have the list of places, events, sporting events, people, things you want to see. Uh, And people frequently will note that the Kentucky Derby is on that list, and I've never cared one iota, not even a little bit, about the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, it's not in my top 50 of things to do and see. Like, literally in sports, I could probably name, yes, 50 or more things that I'd rather do than to go to the, to the Kentucky Derby. Well, here's one. Go to Vegas for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Done. Like, stand in the driveway. That, <laughs> that's, and that's hold a, a football. Yeah. Because that, that's a sports, sports thing. thing. Yeah, there's, there's two. I keep going. I mean, but when that's the bar... But this would be a great weekend to go to. I mean, any weekend really is. You yes. can make it work. Yes. But 
Uh, I mean, think about all the sports that's happening, plus the Derby. See, there's so oh, much to there's wager always on. Always a good right time now. to go to Vegas, buddy. There's always a good time to go to Vegas. Yeah. Almost any time you're going to Vegas, that's a good time to be going to Vegas, my friend. Oh yeah. I just don't know how people legitimately bet on horses. I, I'm sure they do. I, I listen. I know how they do, but I mean, and win, and to have it not be truly gambling, but rather, you know, you're eliminating a lot of the fringe stuff that give you a much better chance to actually win. And there are people who have done it their whole lives. Obviously, they're degenerates, but they really can look at these horses and they know something about them to the extent that they can make an educated guess. Uh, I, I, It's a horse. I just don't know. I mean, I yes, I'm sure Secretariat was a, an easy bet, but <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, it's like minus 3,000, right? So Yeah, yeah. But I just, everything about that event reeks of things that I hate. Like, going to that event, ugh. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Awful. Unless you're going with, uh, was it Wes Welker, who was just tossing cash? Okay, I'm down with that. He's just throwing cash just straight to people. Straight tossing cash. So if you were lucky enough to go at the year that Wes Welker went and sit somewhere near him while he got drunk and threw cash, then great. I don't get it. And the people who love the Kentucky Derby, they love the hell out of the Kentucky Derby. They will not hear of this. They think that this is blasphemy on my part. What is wrong with you? The Kentucky Derby is one of the great American sporting events of all time. No, they fix their polo shirt as you besmirch what you're talking about. They would. They, I mean, they. yeah. So what is this, the 140-something version of the Kentucky Derby I think I saw? I guess it would be 141 because I think that's what I've seen for the promos all week long for the NHL because that's what they do. The, they promo the hell out of it during the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Kentucky Derby always sneaks up on me. I don't know why I never see it coming. I'm always like, oh, Kentucky Derby, huh? It's always around Cinco. It's the 144th, Tom. Ah, I wasn't paying close enough attention to those promos. Must have been going up to get a beer. I'm going to read this here. We'll read this together. Here you go. It's uh, topics about the Kentucky Derby. The it, it, Forbes did uh, something about betting the Kentucky Derby. The best way to bet $100 at the Kentucky Derby. Now, this does interest me because I like gambling. Mm -hmm. And I just asked the question, you know, what? how do you do this? How do you gamble the Kentucky Derby and, and do it in a way that makes sense? Not just randomly throwing money at something that you have no chance to, to you know, or very little chance to get right. Um, but apparently it's a bettor's paradise. The race features 20 of the country's best three-year-old thoroughbreds. Didn't know that. I had no idea. I mean, this is like, that's really basic. That's information. basic stuff, didn't yeah. Didn't have any idea what kind of horse. I didn't know. I don't know how old the horse is. Three years old. Horses that have beaten out thousands of others to win spots in what is often called the most exciting two minutes in sports. It's, it's not. It's just not. Like the first quarter of a CBA basketball game from 1987 was probably more exciting. Now than the I Kentucky do, Derby. I do enjoy the two minutes of the Kentucky Derby. I mean, I'll watch it if I'm around television. If I'm, you happen to be walking by and it's on, you'll watch it. You're not racing out somewhere unless it's to get drunk with people, and that's like the thing. Uh, you, yes, I, there have been house parties. Right. Uh, that, yes, yeah. I've been. We've all been to those, and that's fine. Sure. No, but I mean, I'm wagering. I'm watching my horse. Well, I'll do that, too, in a little pool of some kind. But um, this year's contenders might be the strongest crop at Churchill Downs uh, in years. Quote, in my opinion, and there is a deeper field of potential winners in this year's Kentucky Derby. That's the Churchill Downs CEO, Bill Karstengen. Um than we've had, in, as he said, in years. Uh, you have to throw your hands up and say, I'm just not sure who's going to win. Well, hell, what are we doing here? Uh, the smartest ways to deploy your betting dollars, assuming the track is dry and fast on Saturday. Many of their picks involve race favorites, Justify and Meddlesome. And you can learn about those horses by clicking these links. But if the course is muddy from lots of rain, they warn you might want to consider throwing out some of the below names in favor of my boy Jack, Flame Away, <laughs> Enticed. <laughs> Three horses that have proven that they love to run on a wet track. Bet 10 to win 10 to place on Meddlesome. You, you got that, Tom? Uh-huh. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Uh, was nothing. I'll tell you later. What did I do? You did nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong. Okay. 
A dollar trifecta box with five favorites. Justify, Medelson, Good Magic, Audible, and Bolt de Row. Okay. So there you do that one. Uh, $12, one trifecta box on five. Six, seven, 11, 12 is how you'd say it. Six, 11, six, seven, 11, and 14 is how you'd say it if you walked up. Okay. Cost you 60 bucks total. To win thousands. That's right. The you bet a dollar exacta on Justify and Medelson with the rest of the field. So what you would do is you'd say race twelve dollar exacta on seven fourteen with all. Okay. All right, that's my bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so print it up already. Let's go. You'd bet a dollar on the Superfecta with Justify or Medelson taking the top two places. Good Magic, Audible, Hofberg, and Vino Rosso as options for third and fourth place. You'd walk up and say. Race twelve dollars. Dollar superfect on seven fourteen with seven fourteen and five six nine eighteen with five six nine eighteen. What? That's what you'd say if you walked up to the window. Okay, that's how you'd say it. it sounds like you have to be an auctioneer here. Yeah, you have to know what you're doing here a little bit. I I don't know what any of this means. I don't. I feel like a dumbass with this well, stuff. Trifecta as exact as and all that stuff. I mean, you know. Yeah. You've got it. They want you to adjust for the fifty to one, the thirty to one, and how you do, you limit yourself to a hundred dollars. You can bet twenty four here, sixteen there, and another thirteen here, and so. And then you, you get out of there with a hundred dollars. You place those bets, and you got a chance to win thousands. Still doesn't interest me in the slightest. And it's about betting. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's right. I just my dad is the opposite. I've I've brought him up uh, the last few days for multiple reasons, but he knows the horses. Loves the horses. Grew up down in Miami after he moved from Pennsylvania. And the guy he worked for, uh, an old Cuban guy that owned a furniture store, would skip out at lunch every day to go bet on the horses in Hialeah. And he learned all about horse racing because of that guy. And so it tugs at his heartstrings to this day. And so he watches all of these races and actually knows a little something about it. We are polar opposite in that way. None of it interests me at all. And I think that breaks his heart. <laughs> I think it bothers him. He's always like, you don't, you don't want to know about this? And he knows the history of horse racing. He can tell you stuff that happened in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Of course he does. Of course he knows the history well, of horse yeah, racing. He, yeah, he knows the history of most things. But he knows the history of horse racing. He does thoroughly. Uh, he'll tell you. You can take an obscure horse, like a horse that's not a household name that, you know, wasn't part of a movie or anything. Feeder fish. Like, no, like Yeah. If you're not like it's not Sea Biscuit or Secretary, it's a name that you would never hear. He'd be like, "Oh yeah, Kawhi King." Well, here's the thing about Kawhi King, and then he would just go through the whole thing and give you everything there was to know about Kawhi King. It's crazy. I'm with you now. We used to when I was a kid. I guess it was fostering a gambling spirit for later in life. Yay! On the day of the Kentucky Derby, my parents would get the sports page, and then they would uh, cut out all of the jockey, um, like they had the jockey outfits, a little chart. Horse names and the jockey outfit. So they cut the jockey outfit, and then they'd bend those pieces of paper in a hat, and then they'd assign the jockeys and the horses to everybody. And then we would wager a That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's fun. You got a family thing involved. Yeah, I do that every year, too. It, it's something like that. Right. But that's what we would do since I was five. So I've always kind of enjoyed, uh, but I have missed a few of them in the past five years you know you didn't fret over it either did you no. oh i missed the kentucky derby who won great all right yeah so anyhow we were saying yeah that's how that goes no right now my skills are being put to the test i've told you uh that a mutual friend of ours has been bugging me for uh hockey tips on on the playoffs and uh over unders and spread bets and uh, earlier today i got a text uh, on this very subject that said uh uh, Boston six, Vegas five and a half. Those are the over unders, of course. Both minus one and a half. Thinking over for Vegas. You like either dog tonight outright, or how about nothing at all too? Because I'm on a bit of a cold streak, so he's getting mad at me. But I've been given advice. I'm seven and five. All you got to do is ask Big Daddy Jay. We'll roll in here and get it right. He's mad because Big Daddy hasn't made an appearance on the show in some time. I'm not doing it lately. Hot damn! Big Daddy's done it again. Yeah, Big Daddy has been betting baseball. Big Daddy has just been straight betting baseball on the regular and winning. I was six and two to start my playoff run. Oh, and you got hit. See, you gave him a little, gave him a little love. Well, but I told him moderate confidence the whole time. I'm like, listen, uh, there were two or three very confident bets, and I, and I went two and one on those three. Uh, but now I'm seven and five, so I've cooled off considerably. Mm. 
So now he, he's getting a little terse with me. With, he, what do you think? Or how about nothing at all? He needs the action. Yeah, he needs the action. He needs the action. He needs man. Big Daddy J. What he needs is for Big Daddy to give him his baseball bets every night. That's what you do. Big Daddy is laying back in the cut with the hockey playoffs. It's the playoffs. It's not the same as a regular season. But, you know, as soon as I get you the sounder with the hockey stuff, you know, we got to pivot here. we got to find some new stuff. Well, listen, I, 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 I should probably bet tonight's action with the NHL because Boston's going to win tonight. Go ahead. Hey, Big Daddy, having some red Russians tonight? We'll know in about 47 seconds. Lead into an open wing. It's picked up by Dowdy, an empty net. He scores. Hot damn, Big Daddy's done it again. Red Russians all around, Teddy. All right, Big Daddy. All right, well, if you must know, Big Daddy will enter the fray for tonight. Uh, I take the Bruins, and I'll bet them on the money line to win the game outright, and I'll also take them and give a goal and a half. Well, this is a do-or-die game for them. so That's exactly you would, you would why I'm doing it. Yeah. I have made that selection. Now, Big Daddy is willing to take a little bit of advice if we're going all in on both games. San Jose and the Vegas Golden Knights. What say you with San Jose getting a goal and a half plus 135 on the money line? Well, I'd say that you you kind of want to double down here one way or the other. If you're taking San Jose, you're taking the over in that game as well. And if you're taking Vegas, you're taking the under. That's how you bet that, that series right there. I'm taking Vegas and I'm taking the under. That's how that goes tonight. And Big Daddy J will nestle up to the bar and watch intently. Hot damn, Big Daddy's done it again. Jeff Cameron Show 97 died, ESPN Radio. Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We got this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. this. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. The melatonin, so you can fall asleep naturally and wake with no next day grogginess. So tonight, try new ZQuil Pure Z's from the sleep experts at Vix ZQuil. Games for Less, the only locally owned and operated gaming store in town, has Tallahassee's largest selection of new and used video games and game systems. The future of video gaming is at Games for Less, where they have both the PS4 and Xbox One. It's time to trade in your old systems and elevate your gaming experience now. Games for Less is also your headquarters for the best in retro gaming. Atari 2600, original Nintendo, Super NES, or Sega Genesis, you name it. They got it at Games for Less. Games for Less, the Super Walmart Shopping Center on Appalachia Parkway. Give them a call today at 850-219-353. Five, that's games for less. Say what? Say what? It's the boy Big Snoop D-O-double-G. And I got a very special message to the players. That's right, to the males. Sexual performance issues are more common than you think. Maybe not for me, but probably for you. Over 25% of new ED cases are guys under 40. So what do you do if you suffer from ED? Go to 4 the wellness brand for men. So you can look good, feel good, and perform well in the bedroom. You dig? Thanks to science, E to the D can be optional. Say, man, don't be embarrassed. Guys should take better care of themselves. Look good, feel good, 
live good like me. It's five dollars. Five dollars to try it out, man. And it comes right to your crib. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't meet me there. Beat me there. Go to forhims.com slash love. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash love. For him slash love. Go. This is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Oh, man, what a good time to uh, partake in a little wash around the clock. TallahasseeLaundry.com. If you want to queue it up, feel free, buddy, because we'll do it right now. There's a ton to watch this weekend. Jeff, what's your plan with all of this laundry? Not my job. (laughs) Excuse me. Get off the couch already. Wash around the clock's got it. More watching, less washing. Ooh. (laughs) Best husband ever. Well, man, oh, man, where to begin? Uh, First, let me tell you about my friends at Wash Around the Clock. Go to TallahasseeLaundry.com and learn more. But you want to sign up for Easy Laundry. Believe me, you do. Pick up a delivery service. Tom and myself both use it. Uh, You can use it at your home or your office. It is the ultimate inconvenience. It's time-saving. Laundry, dry cleaning, pressing, they do all of that. They bring it right back to you. They fold it neatly. They hang it up. They do everything you want done with your laundry, only you're not doing it. They're doing it. And it's affordable. It gets done well. It gets done right. And you save that time. That time that could be spent, better spent with family, friends, whatever it is, outdoors, hanging out, watching a movie. You're not doing laundry. You're not folding clothes. You're not spending hours of your week worried about that because they do that and um you just i think you dropped off laundry do i did this morning that's correct there you go yes good times too much travel but they make my life easier from those stresses and i love them for that i do too so no matter what your laundry need may be you do need to go and uh, have it done by our friends at uh, wash around the clock tallahasseelaundry.com sign up for that easy laundry service man good stuff good people local business that uh, works hard for your dollar there. All right. So for me, Tom, I, I'll tell you, um, I watched a little bit of everything last night. I watched uh, Pins in, in Washington some. I watched LeBron do his thing. I even watched uh, the Celtics beat the Sixers again uh, from start to finish. Mm, yeah. Impressive. Um, and so, you know, watching these series, I, I, I sat back and just laughed at the kind of lunacy LeBron was putting up last night. I mean, everything he shot went in. It was crazy. And Toronto, you're not winning that series. Just again, I mean, that's just, it's laughable at this point. Toronto was up between six and 10 in the second quarter. I know that because I was driving around coming home from dinner and I was listening to 97.9 ESPN radio and they had the NBA uh, playoffs. How about, how about those that? guys? And every possession LeBron was influencing the score, whether it was directly by an assist or if he was dunking the basketball or hitting a jump shot. And I know in the second half, obviously, his fadeaway comes to life. But goodness gracious, uh, he knows how important he is. And I guess he saved up enough rest just to get a, you know, where they're going to go, which is probably to at least these finals, if not the NBA finals, and then they're going to lose. They're not going to win the title, but he's going to be a hero once again. If that team goes to the finals, he is a hero, period. Well, if the Celtics come out of the other half, I mean, that's a Celtics team that's not operating at peak. No. LeBron's no. smart enough. I mean, you know, Well, Brad- what LeBron did last night was straight go for the jugular in a way that is so impressive in the way the great players all have. It's that you let us steal a game we didn't have any business winning on a night I didn't play well at all, and yet we found a way to win by a point in overtime. You choked. Now, if we go get this one, this series is over. It is over, and you know it, and I know it, so guess what? I'm going to be that guy. Right. Home court hasn't changed in the in the Boston-Philly series yet, but still, I mean, Philly's up against it now, and if yes. Boston was able to get by on Guile and the wit of its coach, I mean, you're teeing it up for LeBron to go back to the finals again. If it was Philly, nobody would pick him. Well, very few people would pick him, but if it's Boston... The opportunity is there for the taking. I will say this, too, uh, and, and they can't win the title, but Cleveland is is uh, infinitely better. Obviously, this is an understatement. 
when Kevin Love does what he did last night, he yeah. was spectacular. 31 points last night. And so when you got those two playing at that level, Cleveland's a good team at that point. Like, now you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, he had doubled his output by the six-minute mark in the second quarter. Yeah, and that storyline is, um, you know, I mean, he it's interesting. That storyline of Kevin Love in the year that he's had and the problems that he's had and he disagreed with Teron Liu. Uh, and he won out in a battle of wills, if you will. Um, and he said about that, between us, there's obviously mutual respect. Uh, he's helped me so much as I sit here with Cleveland in the past four years, but sometimes you're going to butt heads. And I mean, my entire life, my entire pro career, this is going to be my 10th year. I've spent the majority of my time at the four position and the power forward position. But he sees something out there in me at the five spot, I guess, especially on the offensive end when I have my game going and he wants me to take full advantage of that. So. So there, that's the quote, and he's talked about you know going back and forth with Tyron Lue on that, and well, maybe they bonded a little bit because Love was going through some stuff, not just health wise, but mental health wise, that he's you know brought to the forefront, and obviously Tyron Lue had to leave the team for his own issues, which were health related. So yeah. maybe they can bond together that this year has been a trying one for their lives away from basketball. So anyhow, I watched some of that last night. What will I be watching? Well, yeah, I'll tune into. I probably won't tune into Golden State because they're going to cruise. Uh, Houston and Utah got my attention when Utah won that first game, and you know. With Houston, I'm always like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're on the brink. Mm-hmm. Looking at you, two fingers to my eyes, two fingers back to you, baby. So are Houston fans, if they're being honest with themselves, until they do it. Until they do Until it. they get past Golden State, State. I don't think they'll yeah. believe it. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay, Boston, that's tonight, right? 7 o'clock? Yeah, that's game four in that series. And uh, that sport is featuring amazing series in the second round. The other three series are all tied at two. Yeah, so the, the beautiful night, thing, isn't it? Yeah, the nightcap is uh, Vegas and San Jose. It's so cool that... Las Vegas has a really important game uh, late into the season, into the postseason. But uh, there's a lot of stranglehold games over the weekend. Tomorrow's doubleheader is freaking awesome. It's going to be Caps, Pens. That's the early one. And then Nashville, Winnipeg. Yep, it's that series. That's Nashville really good. and Winnipeg. You must be talking hockey, but it is everything. If you need some late-night viewing tomorrow, you're at home, and you want to see something compelling, it's Nashville and Winnipeg. Really physical stuff. It's not Pirates Brewers. No. No, it's not Pirates Brewers? No, no. <laughs> it's Nashville and Winnipeg. <laughs> so, 7 o'clock. By the way, NBC Sports does a really good job with the hockey. They do. Yeah. I think they do a good job. They're, um, the one problem they have is that they have a pro Pittsburgh slant on the broadcast team. Uh, both Doc and Pierre have fallen in love with the Pens. And uh, that's what happens with dynasties, I guess. But it, it, it's tough for a lot of fans of other teams to overcome. As far as the presentation, uh, the replays, uh, the insights, yeah it's, yeah, it's solid. They've done their job. Who's the uh, cantankerous ex-coach that I can't That's remember? That's Mike Milburn. Yeah, man, is he always mad. He was a good— What is his freaking problem, he's man? He's an angry old white dude, and that's even in the hockey sport. You know, people are like, well, that's an angry old white man. Yeah. But, you know, it's hockey. But what in the world is he so angry about all the time? Why is everything a damn travesty with that guy? Because uh, it's not like it was in the old days. Oh, Guys geez, aren't as tough as they used to be. I mean, already, sir. Oh, God, Jesus. Well, I mean, listen, if you can't get along and everybody yeah. is uh, the devil to you because they're not you from 40 years ago, well, go to hell. Nobody wants to hear that nonsense. He's gotten better this year because they forced him to go uh, work in the booth. He has to be a color analyst now. So now that he's analyzing games, there are insights. I am now because he was a, a player, a coach, and a GM, and you're starting to learn his insights and what he could see and why he built some things. That right, were, you right. Know, somewhat salient, uh, but yeah, when he was just in the in the studio, all he would do is just be the angry guy. Always, always incensed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's the end of the world type in sense. Right. You know, that. Which, right. uh, it's a random Tuesday night, my man. Well, I don't know what they're doing. Right. I mean, that's yeah. offensive. Yeah. yeah. He gets, yeah, it's crazy. TallahasseeLaundry.com. Wash around the clock. That's what we'll be doing. We'll be watching, not washing. Easy laundry. Go check it out. Wash around the clock. Jeff Kemper Show, 97.9 ESPN Radio. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 574- 4100. 
Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. this. Smoother. Bolder. Sharper. Comfier. Smarter. Fiercer. Tougher. Stronger. Longer. Greater. Prouder. Gravely Zero Turn Mowers. TNT. License number MP46050. Tee it up at the Edwin Watts Golf Shop's 50th anniversary sale this Friday through Sunday. Score three dozen Strixon Tri-Speed Tour Balls or two pairs of Ben Hogan shorts for just $50. Take $50 off the Callaway 200 Rangefinder, and when you trade in your old clubs, you'll get a 50% trade-in value bonus towards your new club purchase. Some manufacturer restrictions apply. And while you're there, register to win a $500 shopping spree. Only at Edwin Watts, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers since 1968. Time to check out our buddy Joe over at Truck and Car Concepts. What's going on, man? Hey, man, what's going on with you guys? Well, here's the deal. I heard that you were gone all day as you were out tinting the house. Yes, sir. His customer was having a big heat problem uh, on the west side of the house in the afternoon. Uh, we went over, did the estimate, decided to do the east side of the house as well. Let me tell you something. We knocked out 79% of the heat energy, which is going to totally knock down the electricity bill. Not only that, but she had some really nice paintings that were fading out in the uh, living room. 99% ultraviolet ray elimination. So it would fade out like carpets and drapes and furniture and stuff? Not only that, but it also fades out those expensive hardwood floors. So uh, window filming the house is uh, is nothing but a plus. Uh, it, like I said, it comes and, and it takes down uh, the heat energy, uh, and that's, you know, bottom line. So even though the place is called Truck and Car Concepts, you could throw house in there, too. <laughs> we can do houses, planes, trains, or automobiles, man. <laughs> if it's got glass, we tin it. Truck and Car Concepts. 656-8800. Give us a call. As the morning sun shines in, you hit the snooze button. Ten minutes turned into an hour. Now there's no time to take a shower. Or time to get dressed, which explains the sweater vest and the fedora. When your morning is hell, just go to Taco Bell. And for just a dollar, let us make you breakfast. Like Taco Bell's Grilled Breakfast Burrito. Eggs, bacon, and cheese wrapped in a warm tortilla. At participating stores for a limited time during breakfast hours. Prices may vary. Tax extra. It's only natural that some garden soil is better than others. Like Nature's Care Organic Soil at the Home Depot. Right now, it's at a special buy of two bags for just 12 bucks. Plants get a healthier start with Nature's Care raised bed soil, potting mix, or garden soil. And right now, you'll enjoy some pretty healthy savings. What's more natural than that? Nature's Care Organic Soil. Two bags, just 12 bucks. Now at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Valid through May 9th. Product selection varies by store. Driving every day from the Amerigas Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is 97.9 ESPN Radio. WTSM, Woodville, Thomasville, Tallahassee. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. The Western Conference takes over in the NBA playoffs tonight here on ESPN Radio. Our coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. For Game 3 between the Warriors and the Pelicans in New Orleans, Golden State leads the series 2-0. That game to be the first of a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. The nightcap will be Game 3 for the Rockets and Jazz in Salt Lake City. That series tied at 1. Last night in Toronto, another epic performance by LeBron James. 43 points and 14 assists doing most of his damage from the outside as the Cavaliers grabbed a 2-0 series lead on the road against the Raptors. ESPN's Brian Windhorst. There was a certain point where LeBron was like, I wonder how crazy I can get with this. I wonder if I shoot the ball 18 feet in the air, if it'll go in. I wonder if I turn to my left, it'll go in. I wonder if it'll turn to my right, if it will go in. He was just completely having fun with them. And uh, look, there's going to be certain nights where LeBron's just going to throw in shots and you're just going to have to shake your head and 
you know, give it to them. Brian Windhorst on Golick and Wingo. The Milwaukee Bucks may meet with as many as 10 coaching candidates in their first round of interviews. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reports among those the Bucks will interview are former Hornets coach Steve Clifford, former Pelicans coach Monty Williams, and Spurs assistant Ettore Messina. Angels first baseman Albert Pujols needs one hit for number 3,000. The team starts a five-game road trip tonight with the first of a three-game series in Seattle. Golf, Tiger Woods shoots a two-over 73 today with only one birdie on his last hole of the day. The ninth, Woods right on the projected cut line at two-over par. Live from the Amerigas Propane Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. It's Libations Friday. Brought to you by Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill. Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill on Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Quarter Pocket. To Jeff Cameron Show 97.9 ESPN Radio and a fine libations Friday to you and yours. Just reading during the break there, I have to give Sophie Dean credit about the Orlando. Uh, I don't know what it's called. What is that called? Yeah, it's a Seminole Club of Seminole Orlando. Seminole Club of Orlando. What, what's yeah. the tour called? It's just a booster tour? Yeah. Probably the Florida booster tour for Florida State. You know, Taggart's on the road, and uh, I always read into this and find out, you know, what's he saying. Most of these things, of course, are there to just further rejuvenate the base and get everybody excited about Florida State football again, raising some money and some spirits. And, uh, you know, you shake hands, you kiss babies, you take pictures, you tell some stories, you get people pumped up about the garnet and gold. It's not that hard. They're there. They want to be pumped up. You just say a few positive things about the school, and, and, and that will come across. And Willie Taggart is the kind of guy that can certainly uh, resonate and, um, I, I think, inspire people who are of like mind there. And um, it's it's a strength of his where it was a, a glaring weakness for Jimbo. He hated these things. He didn't want to be at them. I can't only imagine the stuff he has to do at Texas A&M. And when I sit around and think about it, I just start laughing. Because I know how much he hates that stuff, and there you have to do that stuff a lot. And I got to imagine that's hell on earth for him. A little bit. Willie, however, this is he's in his atmosphere, in his element, if you will. He likes it, and I think the reason it works, frankly, is because that's true. It's genuine. He does like it because he loves Florida State. He's a fan of Florida State, so when he's around other fans of Florida State, they can fan out. And he knows he's the coach, of course, and he's going to have to do that. But it's easy for him to wear that hat. It's flexing a different muscle, one that he did his entire childhood. And I think that is relatable. I think the people there, most of them, were the same way. And so when you read about these stops, they're always glowing. They're always, you know, well-received. And the fans, like, for example, uh, you, you read a quote from one of the fans there in Orlando meeting up with Willie Taggart. Quote, I think it was more of a job for Jimbo Fisher. This is a dream for Willie Taggart. Well, he, you know, whether it is or it isn't, doesn't matter. That guy thinks that. Right. That's the way he... You sell that. Yeah. Um, Willie Taggart had more to say than rah, rah, Florida State. He did say, we won't have as many uniforms as we had at Oregon. Well, nobody does. But we're going to be swagged out a little bit, that's for sure. And that's funny, too, because that's a divided camp amongst Florida State fans and i think it's divided right down it's age it's all it is it's Mm -hmm. age it's if you're over what 50 you hate that if you're under 50 you might be inclined to like it if you're under 30 you certainly like it yeah i think probably 41 to 50 is uh, this nebulous area yeah you get a mix Uh, that's me i'm 46 i like some of it not all of it 
but I'm okay. I'm open minded enough to know that you got to do some of that, and some of them look pretty cool, and I and I'll get involved in that. I like uniform talk. You know that. Well, it can't look stupid. It's pretty simple, right? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Also, you don't you don't bastardize it to the point where it's unrecognizable that it's your team. Yeah, some of these things go so far the other way where you're, you've are you incorporated colors that have never been part of your color scheme in any way, shape, or form. See, I'm okay with doing, I get it, a blackout, you're wearing all black. A whiteout, you're wearing all white, whatever. I'm okay with that here and there uh, every now and again. But I think whenever you do uniform uh, alterations, they ought to at least involve your color scheme, whether that's white or garnet or gold. But you got to do something there that involves your colors. Like, you can't roll out there in red and yellow. Oh, sure. Or, or, Even though we did. I know. You can't roll out there in blue and teal and, and, and you know, pink accents. Or I'm just using random colors that don't associate to Florida State. But would you be okay with a game where we use the Native American heritage uh, color that we have for basketball? Yeah, the problem with that is that that's a sham thing done by Nike, and I don't think the tribes get any of the money. Well, obviously, that could be changed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, like, if they did, okay. Sell the gear yeah. only at the bookstore, and yeah, then, you yeah. know, all proceeds. Don't do the whole proceeds thing and not say all, you know? Yeah. Be careful with that be one. Be careful how you want to say it. all proceeds yeah. for something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there you go. Um, or tell me the percentage. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. 30% of proceeds benefit scholarships at Florida State for Native American citizens. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, I would be go all on. right with that. No, I'm saying, uh, I'm meaning the color scheme. Yeah, yeah, I'd be all right with that. If if they did it right and, and people truly benefited that should be benefiting. Um, yeah, I would. I'd be all right with that for a game. Yeah. I, I, listen, when we broke out, you know, in the spring game with the all-whites... Yes, please. Well, we've said this before. The all garnet look makes the gold number work. That's the only time. Right. If you're going to have the gold, you know, the traditional uniforms, then you got to get a garnet jersey with white numbers, and that's that's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they were stubborn over there in the past. Perhaps this group will not be stubborn to fix something like that. But if you go garnet on garnet, the gold numbers actually do look nice. Yeah, it's the only time. The, the all white with the garnet trimming is just regal as all hell. It is beautiful, and we should do that a lot. Well, the next time you have Willie on, and I know you guys are old pals at this point, <laughs> you really should ask him a couple of questions about uniforms, as in, uh, will the practice uniforms ever be used? Because those are also spectacular if you want to go for the minimalist look for a week. Oh, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's stunning, right? Oh, that stuff is... I mean, it's. I know it's garnet is the color, but it, it shines like a ruby, the numbers oh, on the practice uniforms. It, yes. It calls out. It does. Reaches to your heart. It, it really does. Take my money kind of a I, thing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. you got me. You got me all day on that one. You got me. Anyhow, he did say that they will have. And I'm curious what those combinations will look like. I am. I'm like everybody else. Just as long as it's not two-tone helmets, man. No two-tone. No, no, we're not doing that weird bleed into each other nonsense that the yeah. Jags did for all those years. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Okay, you're for introducing a white helmet for a white out game too, right? I would have a white helmet with garnet, yes. And that's it. Not really any gold much at all there. Just no, a white, white garnet, garnet look. Mm, regal. Sizzling. My God, what a uniform that would be. White on white with the garnet numbers and the garnet trimming. And mm -hmm. then the you know on the shoulder pads, mm -hmm. and then the garnet if oh with the spear oh buddy, wouldn't that be something? Yes. Also the throwbacks. You got to call Nike and get the state of Florida helmet. Love the state with of the Florida. Mustard. Yeah, with the mustard, we can do the throwbacks. Any throwback. Well, hell, I'm wishing the Bucks were permanently thrown back. Well, and I wonder if they're doing that now. They've sold the shirt before, so it's not breaking news. But I've seen that this year's Nike release, they have the state of Florida polo, and that's something they're pushing hard. So maybe, maybe have we called in conjunction with this uh, piece of it merchandise? May have worked out. The other thing Willie Taggart had to say was when asked about whether or not Florida State would play Texas A and M, would they schedule a game against Texas A and M? He he said in response, "You've got to ask them if they want to play us." Um, and he's right. We're the more prestigious university. We're the by far. Uh, most noted, uh, more notable university when it comes to football than Texas A&M. It's not even close. a and is like an afterthought in most people's minds as to anything to do with football. But Florida State is amongst the uh, elite. And so it was smart of him to turn it around because that's a, I think that's fair. Um, but I also think that I, many people in this fan base want to see that game. 
They do want to see that game. Yeah, but they want to see it next year. So if they had to blow up the Boise game and they gave you an A&M game, would you take it? The one on the road. I'm in the minority here. I'm less than 1% of the people that would say this. No. No, I'm going to Boise. You're going to Albertson Stadium. I'm going to Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho, and I can't wait to do it. I don't care anything about Texas A&M. I'm not obsessed with Texas A&M. I don't need to see us play Jimbo Fisher. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. I don't really care. I've moved on. Now, we have honest discussions about what he did or did not do here at the end and things that frustrate us, and we do bring that up from time to time, but I'm seriously not consumed by this. I don't really care. I care that Willie kicks ass here. That's all I care about is Florida State. I'm not worried about Texas A&M. I don't need to play them to get some sort of measure of revenge. I don't feel like it's a revenge thing. No, he got us a title. Well, no, he won us a title, but moreover, they got him out of here when we needed him out of here and we weren't going to get out from under that contract without the help of somebody acting like a dumbass and overpaying for a guy who was lost I mean they're, they're, thank God Texas A&M came along and screwed themselves by hiring a coach who was shot so he'll go there and suck and we'll move on and prosper and I'm fine with that and I'm not even saying that that sounds vindictive it's not he was done here he was done now maybe that message will resonate there, and it'll have a measure of success. Not a lot, because he ain't out doing Alabama. He's just not. It's not going to happen. A&M's never won a damn thing ever. He's not going to start. So there it is. I'm good. Let's go. We got out from under a horrible contract because of Texas A&M. He'll have one nine or ten win season, which will he'll be lauded for. Uh, Saban will retire, but Dabba will go over to Alabama, and Jimbo will take the Clemson job. There it is. <laughs> the circle is complete. <laughs> That ain't happening. I, I I believe. This sounds weird, and again, I want you to know where it comes from. I believe that's the last job he'll ever have. The A and M job. Mm. Over under five years. Uh, well, f- right at five. I mean, I don't think okay. they can fire. I mean, they could. They do have no, more money. Got, than they, yeah, they yeah. got the money. What I what they I paid think, him in toilet paper. I say that's the last job he'll ever have. He strikes me as a guy that would go and coach high school and love it. Be and, good for his soul kind of a thing? And volunteer. Because I know he loves the game. That's true. He loves the game. He loves what the game provides loves you. Loves kids. He loves kids. Loves the game. I, I think, because he's never going to need money. He's now got more money than he could ever spend. His family, everybody's set up forever, for generations. So... You know, he would throw himself into um, something for the joy of the game, I think, if this doesn't work out, if if this fizzles and he fails at A&M. Because I just don't – he said to me before that he doesn't want to coach in the pros. That has never been a motivator. Now, that could that change? Sure. But – It could now, given the you know steps in the last two or three years where it's a lot more corporate than it used to be for him, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, it would be interesting. I, I just, Something strikes me as he, he'll be out of the game in about five years. Couldn't you argue he is coaching in the pros right now? <laughs> <laughs> to some I mean, degree, Well, yeah. given the corporate response, I mean, not corporate, but booster responsibilities, it's very much a, a, a buttoned-up kind of itinerary, more professional than it is uh, all shucks. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how much he's going to like that. I mean, I've I wondered it from the day that it was. he's going to love access to the greatest facilities in football, and he's going to love that when he wants something new that he thinks he needs to compete, he's going to have access to. I don't wish him ill will. If it succeeds, fine. I, if you ask my opinion, will it? I think I think not, no. And I, and I think there are a lot of reasons why, a lot of reasons. And some of those have to do with some personal things for him that, that I don't think he's addressed. And until those things are addressed, I don't know that he can find the kind of joy. Uh, and I'm playing amateur psychologist here. I am. I know that. But I don't think he can find the joy that he's he's looking for I, I, in, in coaching the game. I don't, you know, there's just some things out there lingering. Um, and I hope he does. I hope he does. Uh, because I do think there was, a, I got to see it. There were things good about the man. There were things good about what he was doing here and certainly with the kids and everything else. He it, it, it just lost his way a little bit. And and so, you know, maybe 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 he gets healed or whatever. I, I I don't know, but I think that will act as a barrier to some extent to really reaching the kind of success that certainly they're paying him to have. I mean, they're you don't pay somebody seventy five yeah. million dollars to go nine and four, 
Well, and there's no doubt around this town that uh, if we're out and about on a Saturday and we're not playing or we're done, and oh, that game's going to be TV, on. It's going to be on TV. No, no, it's everybody's going to listen. I'm not saying I'm not curious. It does serve as a as a curiosity. There's no doubt that yeah, all things being equal, and A and M's on. Sure, throw it on. Yeah, you're just curious more than anything else. Well, we've never been in this position. No, we really haven't. And so, yeah, Bowden didn't go somewhere else. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it will be unique. I mean, for some, to some extent, that's true no matter what, right? I mean, if the Raiders are on, oh, I'm checking in. on You're Gruden. checking in on Gruden. This well, there was a, a story today that he's effectively taken over the role completely, of general manager. Completely taken over. That's a disaster. I, I said that mm. yesterday. That's a disaster. Right. You better win early. That's the thing. But you paid him for ten years. Oh well, yeah. No. <laughs> Speaking of money and more money than you know what to do with, whew. And he'll pour his heart and soul in, but it'll be misguided. And I don't like. I don't like that he continues to double down on the. I don't worry about the modern metrics and ways of evaluating and you kind of need to use some of that but i evaluate how i evaluate and i get my bowl cut <laughs> his looks a lot better than the owners oh my goodness gracious jeff cameron show 97 died espn radio Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADC.com. Commercial lawnmowers don't have odometers, but if they did, you might be surprised to see you could be mowing thousands of miles a year. That's why Gravely Zero Turn Mowers are built for the long haul. So when you're mowing the equivalent of Miami through Kentucky bluegrass country, all the way to Seattle, and back again every year. You can count on your Gravely Zero Turn Mower to get the job done, mile after mile. Gravely, built to mow the distance. Over 150 new zero turns in stock. Visit TNTSuperCenter.com to view inventory and pricing. TNT. In Thomasville, Georgia. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to give you special savings on the toughest tractors and utility vehicles on earth during the Mahindra Red Tag Sale. Hurry in for up to $7,900 in cash back and red tag savings. Only from Mahindra. Up to $7,900 in cash back savings. Visit TNTSuperCenter.com to view selection. Offer with approved credit. See dealer for details. Program restrictions may apply. TNT. In Thomasville, Georgia. Hi, honey. How was your day? Uh, it was fine. Pretty uneventful. How about you? Well, I called the auditors this afternoon and made an appointment for one to come out to the house. Wait, what? Have you lost your mind? Auditors? Why would you call them? Now we have to find our tax returns, paycheck stubs, and financial records, not to mention all those forms. Good grief. Relax, honey. It's not that kind of auditor. It's not? No. I called the city of Tallahassee Utilities and scheduled a free energy audit. Energy audit? Right. It's when an energy auditor from our own utilities comes out to the house, examines the structure, and checks our energy 
energy and water systems and then recommends changes we might make to save energy, water, and money. And you said it's free. Absolutely. It's free from the City of Tallahassee Utilities, our own utilities. Sounds good to me. Let's save some money. If you're a City of Tallahassee residential, electric, and natural gas customer, you can schedule a free energy audit. Call 891-4-YOU. That's 891-4968. And schedule your free energy audit at a time most convenient for you. A message from the City of Tallahassee Utilities. Your own utilities. Woohoo! Banditos! Huh? Where? Banditos burritos, baby! And now, Jeff and Eddie wasting time when they're supposed to be recording a commercial. What were we drinking? It was tall. I just remember there was a lot of it. And it was cold and it was... It was well, it was, it was so hot outside. Man. It was crazy. I couldn't even and the breathe. Truck, and then the truck came up with the dude. Oh, that guy. Food was good. Food was good. Yeah, the food's always good. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. You're locked in with the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. I have to confess, I enjoyed reading this sentence. There were thousands of empty seats in the final few home games of the five-season Bolima era. Bolima. He's not that. <laughs> but with the excitement of a new coach and the promise of thrilling offensive football, fans should come back. This, of course, a write-up about uh, the former fatty fat, 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 Brett Bielema and his Arkansas program, no longer his Arkansas program, but what will Chad Morris do? Lest we forget that Chad Morris has taken mm. over at Arkansas. And uh, I wanted to look at this article because I wanted to see just how bad Arkansas had been. I knew off the top of my head that they had been bad. But their defense allowed more than six yards per play in 2015, 2016, 2017. That was the 100th worst in all of football. In various categories, they were the worst. Uh, four different opponents had over 600 yards of offense against them last year. Just last year. Jesus. They racked up at least 500 yards of total offense in 13 games over the last three years. Golly, can you imagine going to that stadium like that professor? Yes, the tenured professor. Blitzed out of his mind that got ushered out of the stadium mm -hmm. for screaming at Brett Bielema? Well, 600 yards will do that to you. Good God, man. I mean, that is rather remarkable. Arkansas has sucked in a way that is just absolutely mind-boggling. That's like your opponent shooting 65% from the field in basketball. 600 yards. Get out of here with that. So I'm looking, by the way, um, of rec I'm looking at recruiting rankings for Arkansas from 2015 through 2018. I'm using 247 Sports Composite rankings. Um, and here's how they have fared nationally and within the SEC over the last four years. The classes got worse every year. Um, but, I mean, they signed one top 100 prospect. One since 2015, and that was a junior defensive lineman who's only shown some flashes. <laughs> Is that what the article says? Yeah. <laughs> amongst the SEC recruiting classes, uh, the rank amongst SDC recruiting classes, they were in the bottom 25% in 2015. They were... The bottom 40% in 2016, bottom 25% uh, in 2017. And they were like the bottom 5% in 2018. So they were, I think they signed a the second worst class in the SEC. Oh. Sweet Jesus. I mean, Brett Bielema was stealing. Right. So the professor is 100% a hero for at least putting up with it to attend the game in the first place. I mean, it just steady downhill, just absolutely fall off the map after one season. He had one good season of recruiting, and then rah, that's it. Crashing into the side of a mountain. 
You know, Fayetteville was rated by the U.S. News and World Report as America's fifth best city in which to live. What? Mm -hmm. Fayetteville. Fayetteville. I know somebody who's been to Fayetteville, and they said it is a rather wonderful city to live in. They don't do a good job of marketing that fact. No. Most people think of Arkansas, and they think of hell simultaneously. That's correct. They think, I would never want to live in Arkansas. Tar pits. Immediately. You go, Arkansas. You know what I do when I think of Arkansas? I think of Mississippi as the only place that I also wouldn't want to live just on that same level of not mm -hmm. wanting to live, right? Like that where I go, okay, so Mississippi, Arkansas, ooh, that's a toughie. Probably going to I'm going to go with Arkansas, probably. Yeah, I don't really know that there's... Louisiana has a good spot. There's a few good spots in Louisiana. Eh, you want to live in, in the country of Wyoming, the Dakotas? I don't think I would want to live in Kentucky, but I'm. there are beautiful places in Kentucky. Beautiful. So, no, I'd live in Kentucky before I'd live in Mississippi or Arkansas. Hmm. Yeah, Mississippi's probably number one on the list of places not to live. Mm. After that, it's probably Arkansas. I would have thought, but apparently I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, a number of people have said, no, no, Arkansas is pleasant. You'd like Arkansas. Who knew? Right. They Who need to do, Well, more people need to know, Coach. Well, exactly. And, in fact, that's part of the discussion. Uh, they talked about they got to do a better job of marketing. Uh, talked about <laughs> this quote, by the way, cracked me up. And, and this, is, this is really good. Uh, <laughs> Morris and his staff have come in there, and they're kind of talking about how do we get people to come to Arkansas. You know, what do we – and that – you that's hire those Newport Beach ladies from the oh National Championship God. Week. That's well, what they, you do. Yeah, but they're selling Newport Beach. There's a lot to sell about Newport Beach. Sure. That may be the best place to live in the world. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, that's a really pointless job. I mean, that's... It's yeah. like, hey, come visit Hawaii. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah, Sounds I can do good. Yeah. So they were talking about this. Arkansas coach and support staffers have lamented privately for years the fact that getting prospects just to visit Fayetteville is difficult. If they could only get these guys to come in and see Fayetteville, the theory is gone. They might have a shot at more top recruits. And it's true. Fayetteville is a gym. And then they give the stat about where it ranks in the U.S. News and World Report, amongst other ranking services for cities and places to live based on crime rates and education and you know, all this other stuff. And uh, we've got to do a great job of marketing. But tell me, name another city that's better to live in in the SEC. So what cracks me up, that's a quote from Chavis. What makes me laugh about that is Chavis is basically just spitting on all the rest of these southern cities. Like, these podunk, sorry-ass towns. Wait, if, they got a, if they got a load of Fayetteville, they'd think they were in heaven compared to living in wherever you want to name. Correct. Gainesville. But, I mean, that's... Woo. Ouch. That cracks me up. Chavis is like, yeah. There's some truth to that. Although I could, I mean, listen. Well, you go to know, Vandy, you could be in I was going to say, if you lived in Nashville, I'd rather live there than Fayetteville. Then you could play the card, they're Vandy, and we have at least some sort of history. We have a chance. But well, the problem is, how can it be Back such when you were in the Southwest Conference, you had a history. How can it be such a nice place and people wearing hog heads to games? Are you kidding? Well, you just have a problem with their tradition. But, by the way, now listen, I will say this. Uh, as much as we make fun of Woo Pig Suey, and for a good reason, that helmet is awesome, and yes. a Razorback is fierce. And if you went to Arkansas, you'd probably wear that color. Their colors because they're beautiful. Like, yes. I mean that shirt is awesome. If you just had like a, a a white shirt with a red hog, yeah, or vice versa, that's nice. Yeah, but you look in the stands of those games after a touchdown, and you don't exactly see Asheville. You know, it doesn't <laughs> look like Seattle. No, no, it doesn't. Does it? So. Because it's a random Friday, libations Friday at that, we do weird things. Like somehow get in-depth into a discussion about Arkansas football. So if if I must, I will. W's and L's, sir. Let's go fire it up for a little Arkansas football on a Friday. W's and L's. Wins. All right, all right, all right. How you doing? Losses. Damn it. We lost. We f***ing super lost, man. Where do we triumph? Where doth thou fall? Well, first of all, they didn't do him any favors, okay? Arkansas doesn't get a week off until early November as I look at this schedule, and that means they'll play. That's bacon sizzling. I like the chatting little flavor here. That means they'll play nine consecutive weeks of games as I look here to open the season. Jeez. <laughs> They're like, ah, it's Arkansas. Screw him. Elam was gone. Wait, guys. Yeah, yeah. 
So Eastern Illinois win one and zero at Colorado State. Ooh, Ooh, that's a good game. That's a toughie. All right. That's week two, September the 8th. Locked in. I'm going to watch that game. I'm excited about Weird it. Weird uniform clash. Oh, I yeah. love that game. That's an underrated game. We may have just uncovered the most underrated game of the year. Arkansas at Colorado State. Oh. At Colorado State. Okay. On the road there. Mm. All right. I like that game. Mm. Well, I'm going to go with Arkansas, 2-0. Okay. North Texas, 3-0. Now, here we get. We get into murky water. Now things get a little dicey. Okay, got to go three and zero to start the year. So okay, I'm, okay. Yeah, we right. go three and zero to start the year. We're at Auburn. Ain't gonna get it done. That's three and one. Texas A and M. That's in Arlington. Ooh, good game. Let's get it out. Okay. All right. That's a loss. That's a loss. Three and two. Alabama. See, that's why I say you got to start three and zero. Right. Tom, got to yeah. start three and zero. played Saban close. It's about the only thing he did. Yeah. So three and three is what we're going to do yeah. here now. All right, Ole Miss toss up game, pivotal to the schedule. Toss up game. Ole I, Miss is kind of reloading in a weird way, aren't yeah, they? I think I'm going to take Ole Miss, but you know, I mean, it's a toss up game. Okay. That game's at Arkansas. Oh, well, that's a big. That's a big one. Big advantage. Th- then you get a little bit of a respite. You they get, don't travel. Then you get Tulsa. Uh, you should be all right there, right? Ooh. That's a win. You get Vanderbilt. That's a win. Now you got LSU at home. Well, LSU is kind of falling off. They are. But Arkansas sucks. Wait a minute. I'm going to take LSU. Yeah. yeah. At Mississippi State. You're going to lose that game. Yep, going to lose that People one. People like the, that coach up there. Yeah, at Mizzou to end the year. They play offense. They're going to go for 700 yards. Is Chad Morris going to fix the defense in a year? Not no. in a year. So, I mean... I don't know, man. Arkansas hasn't beaten Texas A&M since 2011. It's been 11 seasons since the Razorbacks beat Alabama. It was in 2006 when Nick Saban took over in Tuscaloosa. That was the year, no, the year before. The year before Saban oh, took boy. over in Tuscaloosa. So they haven't beaten Saban. Jesus. Darren McFadden was their running back. Felix Jones was in the backfield. Oh, that was dynamic. Pey- Peyton Hillis was in that backfield. Oh, good Lord. So they... Yeah, that's going to be a toughie. I mean, I would say. That sounds like a four and eight, one win conference year. One, two, three. One and seven in conference play. Four. So I think they're going to lose to Tulsa. They're not going to lose to Tulsa. Can I put it on the big board? You've been wrong on those lately. I, didn't, I still didn't I know, get my credit up there on my bold prediction. I beat you and Matthew. Uh, I'm going to say that's a five. five I'm going to give it five wins. Okay. A little five and seven action. All right, put it on the big board. Arkansas's predictions for the three of us. <laughs> All right? There's a little Arkansas football action sizzle, for you. Sizzle, sizzle. That's what you get on a libations Friday. We'll be watching that neutral site game against Texas A&M the next uh, week after that Auburn game. They'll have to lick their wounds after the Auburn oh, game. Oh, buddy. Get up for the big A&M game. That's, well, that's, that's, yeah. in, that's in Jerry Land. If I'm Morris, I'm saying, you know what? Put all the eggs in this basket. Yeah, we can when beat We ain't beating Auburn. We ain't beating Alabama. That A and M Arkansas game final could be fifty seven to fifty four. Jimbo would hate that. Well, it may have to be This is my lot in life. <laughs> I've got to do this nonsense. Damn it. Dos. Oh, he's not here. Jeff Cameron Show ninety seven ID ESPN Radio. Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We We got got this. this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. (laughs) We We got got this. this. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. 
When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Could you turn that down a little, please? Hello, my name is Jim Smith, and I'm the owner of Poor Paul's here in Tallahassee. First, I want to thank you all for stopping. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm here on the Capitol steps and why I don't have any clothes on. Because you're a pervert. Uh, <laughs> let me explain. This is being recorded for a Poor Paul's radio commercial. And I think if I record it totally nude, people will pay more attention to my message. <laughs> Business is great at Poor Paul's, but I still have one small problem. I'll say you do. My problem is that in spite of having free Gumby's Pizza and $4.95 pitchers every Sunday and Monday night, free beer and free mixed drinks for our lovely ladies every Tuesday night, and other great money-saving specials every other night of the week, some of you are still going to other bars. Bars whose owners would never bear their souls, so to speak, as I am. So I'm simply asking for your business so poor Paul's can grow. I see something else that needs to grow. Ah, uh, this isn't working. Hand me that towel, please. I have a hanky. I have known for some time now that some insurance companies are not exactly being truthful with their customers, stating such things as if you do not use one of their approved body shops, they will not guarantee the repairs, or it may cost you more out of pocket. Here at Lisa's Paint and Body Shop, the work we do is guaranteed for as long as you own your vehicle. Lisa's Paint and Body Shop, 385-2665. License number MP46050. Don't just listen to The Jeff Cameron Show. Watch it live. The Jeff Cameron Show Streamcast. Live weekdays 3 to 6 p.m. Head to ESPNTallahassee.com today to watch live or catch up on demand. The Jeff Cameron Show Streamcast. Brought to you by Nice Tire and Auto. Your trusted Goodyear dealer. Nice Tire and Auto. Just minutes away from FSU campus. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. The Western Conference takes over in the NBA playoffs tonight here on ESPN Radio. Our coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. For Game 3 between the Warriors and the Pelicans in New Orleans, Golden State leads the series 2-0. That game to be the first of a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. The nightcap will be Game 3 for the Rockets and Jazz in Salt Lake City. That series tied at 1. Last night in Toronto, another epic performance by LeBron James. 43 points and 14 assists doing most of his damage from the outside as the Cavaliers grabbed a 2-0 series lead on the road against the Raptors. ESPN's Brian Windhorst. There was a certain point where LeBron was like, I wonder how crazy I can get with this. I wonder if I shoot the ball 18 feet in the air, if it'll go in. I wonder if I turn to my left, it'll go in. I wonder if it'll turn to my right, or the it will go in. He was just completely having fun with them. And uh, look, there's going to be certain nights where LeBron's just going to throw in shots and you're just going to have to shake your head and, you know, give it to him. Brian Windhorst on Golick and Wingo. The Milwaukee Bucks may meet with as many as 10 coaching candidates in their first round of interviews. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reports among those the Bucks will interview are former Hornets coach Steve Clifford, former Pelicans coach Monty Williams, and Spurs assistant Ettore Messina. Angels first baseman Albert Pujols needs one hit for number 3,000. The team starts a five-game road trip tonight with the first of a three-game series in Seattle. Golf, Tiger Woods shoots a two-over 73 today with only one birdie on his last hole of the day. The ninth, Woods right on the projected cut line at two-over par. Live from the Amerigas Propane Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. It's Libations Friday. Brought to you by Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill. Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill on Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Quarter Pocket.
By the way, I actually uh, feel the tug of nostalgia yet again uh, today as I read that Peter King, who, well, you know, listen, I'm not going to prattle on and canonize uh, Peter King here for too long, but I do uh, know that uh, I remember when he was hired by Sports Illustrated uh, way back in 1989. I um, was a senior in high school. And when I was a senior in high school, as was the case when I was a junior and sophomore and freshman, I read Sports Illustrated cover to cover. And I was thinking back on that time where that's what you did. You, that's how you got your sports news, and that's how you got insight into these players. Uh, the Internet wasn't around. And you sat down and you read your sports magazines cover to cover, as you did if you were a music fan, your music magazines. And I do miss that um, because, again, at that point, you are locked in on one thing and one thing only. You are not haphazardly glancing through a series of articles, but you are locked in and investing time and energy. I like that you don't always have to do that now. I do like the relative ease with which you can gather information now. But I do miss the time uh, as marked by his hiring there at uh, Sports Illustrated. He's leaving Sports Illustrated now after uh, 31 years or whatever it is. So he's he's decided to, uh, or 29 years, excuse me, at Sports Illustrated. He's leaving. Um, and it was funny because the, the my school and, and guys in my school were divided in a weird way by those who got Sports Illustrated, read it cover to cover, and could talk about it at lunchtime, and those who didn't. Now, we talked about other things, of course, too, and we had other interests, but you knew who that group was. You knew that, you know, Jerry Brummett read this or that Stephen Rafferty read this or that, what you know, whatever, and, and you could talk to them about these articles. Yeah, the, uh, the smell of the magazine, right? Yeah. It's one of the great smells. Oh, I loved it. Fresh off the press uh, in my elementary school, we got SI for Kids, which was introduced in the that. 90. Or yep. was it introduced before that? Maybe it was. Oh, it's been around a long time, but okay. I don't remember exactly when it was introduced. I thought yeah. it was new for us. Maybe it was Time for Kids that we got that was new for, but we would read magazines as part of class. Re- reading comprehension lessons, but you're also learning current events stuff. Well, right. But exactly. SI for Kids was uh, something I, I read, and then I graduated as Sports Illustrated, like most people do when I was at either the dentist office or the barber shop or you know, at, at the a friend's bathroom? house. Yeah, well, <laughs> that too. That was the newspapers. Yeah, yeah. I used to read the newspaper uh, ah, daily. Gotcha. Um, and I always bugged my parents to get SI or ESPN or, or golf magazine. We had, we had golf and yeah. golf digest. Um, but my parents always hated it because then you'd get the magazine and you wouldn't read it. So I ended up having to just, you know, pawn it off and go to the barbershop and read or, or the, uh, uh, go to the library at school. But magazines were a big part of life even when I was growing up in the 90s. Well, I, you know, you go back and look. Um, I, 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 magazines were a big, big, big part of everybody's life if you grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s and cared about sports and you wanted to take, you know, I mean, Sports Illustrated was a big one for me. I still now get Golf Digest even though I... Sometimes do you really? Yeah, I get Golf Digest. Yeah, it comes to the house. I get ESPN the magazine because that comes with being an insider. Yeah, I know. I still get that. They can't find me. I think it still goes to my old uh, apartment and college side of town. But I used to, you know, uh, I used to get sporting news, and I, I got all of them um, for years. When I was in high school, and I was trying, <laughs> this is ridiculous, but when I was in high school, and I was trying to get bigger because I needed to gain weight for football. Hey now, and I was always lifting. I, I would get like some stupid like Flex magazine or whatever those were. Really? Well, I, I'm using Flex because that's a an actual magazine now. But there there were like workout magazines only for the pictures. But they would te- they would show you different methods. Yeah. I mean, the internet again didn't exist, so like you saw these Herculean looking guys, and you wondered how does Arnold Schwarzenegger get that big? Well, you would have to go and get those magazines, and they would have their workouts in there, and they would show you how to do the workouts, so that they actually. It was pragmatic. It sure. made sense to get them. Um, so, yeah, I would get tons of these magazines. You remember? Do you remember? That? This reminded me of a bit that I did. I used to get, I'm telling you what I do miss is all the old wrestling magazines. Oh, man. When we were kids, if you went to, I, I always bring up this one Albertsons that was by my house in St. Pete. You'd go there and they had, magazine racks for days and so that you didn't have to walk around with your parents or your mom to go grocery shopping you Mm -hmm. just go to the magazine rack Mm -hmm. and i would get they had so many pro wrestling magazines 
And because cable really wasn't a thing, and you had four channels to choose from yep. when I grew up, you'd miss out on all kinds of things, or it was always tape delayed. So you'd watch later on Gordon Soley and those guys talk about a match that happened, and they'd show you a clip. But the magazine would document it and you, you in greater detail. It would be line by line what happened. And I would read about Abdullah the Butcher attacking Ric Flair from behind in Atlanta in a match that happened on a Tuesday that I ne I'm never going to get to see. And so they would show you this, you know, you'd have the still photos of them bleeding profusely. And we'd be looking at these magazines just riveted. I didn't want to leave. Woo! <laughs> um, I didn't want to leave, man. And all those magazines I absolutely loved. And uh, anyhow, the bit I was going to ask you if you remember was, uh, when did all these weed magazines sprout up? Oh, I don't remember that. That most certainly was for Matt when he was producing, right? Weed magazines everywhere. Really? For ye oh, yeah. There's still, I don't know because Borders is gone. I used to go to Borders all the time. But I couldn't believe how many weed magazines there were. I was, it's like it's, it's like gun magazines. I don't understand that either. It's ridiculous. But I, I crack up. I'm like, who? I mean, I'm not even talking about you being into or not into guns or anything like that or weed or anything. Who's sitting around looking at weed magazines right, yeah. or gun? Oh, there's a pistol. Yep. All right. These are uh, there. It is. is. Well, there's there's cannabis. Yep. Look fit, at that. It's in a tube. Fitness equipment. These are here. Are the new dumbbells out now? Yeah. Look like, at that. Look at that. Take like, a look at this new kettlebell I have. <laughs> like what? It's a big success at the it's, expo. It's ridiculous. Yeah. My I, other buddies would read all the surfer magazines. Now that made sense to me because mm -hmm. you can't go to all those spots. So you'd see somebody catching a gnarly wave somewhere that you're never going to be able to visit, or that at least when you were that age, you were never going to be able to visit. You know what else there is? There's a bunch of kung fu magazines too, Tom. All these losers out there checking out their kung fu magazines or their karate magazines. That exists too. The techniques, man. It's not. It's just a glorification of Bruce Lee. All it is, every one of those magazines are still writing articles on dead-ass Bruce Lee. And that's all they do. Well, it's been working for five, six decades. <laughs> it's just been, that's it. That's what they do. It's like a bit. My friend's dad, who's a mailman, he'd tell me, hey, hey, Tom, you coming over for the weekend? Is there anything you want to read? Any magazines you like? And he would just take them from his route and then put them in after the weekend. So they'd get their magazines two or three days later, but he's already read all of them. He's it's the best job in the world. He cared that well. It's, if you like reading magazines, oh, he's like, yeah, with but you passion. can read anything. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, anyhow, I got to thinking about that because I did. I would look, and there are listen. There was a baseball magazine that I liked. Baseball hobby news was a was a thing. It existed, by the way. Baseball register existed, doesn't anymore. These were all things. Well, the Beckett, I loved that when I was collecting hockey cards because it would give you the values of everything. Do you ever have the phase where you got uh, obsessed with trading cards at all? I obsessed over baseball cards forever, and uh, but I wouldn't get the magazines that told me the value for some reason. I didn't do that. I loved it because I liked going to the card shows and, or the stores and looking for deals. I'm like, oh, well, that's worth $3, and he's because charging you, one. Yeah, so you'd memorize it. Yeah, yeah. I was a nerd for that kind of stuff. The Beckett usually came out, at least for the hockey cards, around July or August. So I couldn't wait to see the new values. I forgot about that. Man, magazines were a thing. Now they're just a nuisance. Clutter up your inbox. Cl I mean, clutter up your uh, yeah. mailbox. Yeah, your mailbox. Yeah. You, you ever sign up for one of those things because you check it out and they, they somehow persuade you into, you can get oh, three, the three bookstore. Yeah, yeah, they F &A get you every, every time. Well, and, and no, I say no, and they push it again. You're like, no. Yeah, and now I'm good Debit, at, not credit, debit. Now I'm really, really, really good at yeah. saying no. But, you know, we got National Geographic... Time, Newsweek, ESPN, the magazine. I still get wait, Golf Digest. Damn Golf. it. Way too many magazines. Golf Digest is always awesome, though. The problem with Golf Digest is that all you want to do when you read that magazine is buy every piece of new equipment that's out. It's just a big advertisement, and they get you. You're like, well, those look like better clubs than mine. Look at that contraption. I wonder if that works. I could eat. Listen, I learned very quickly. I could easily go down the rabbit hole of buys the newest thing guy at Edwin Watts. 
Those guys that you see at Edwin Watts are regulars. They just live in there. They're just hanging out all mm-hmm. the time, hitting new things. Mm-hmm. And I always think, well, that's, you know, listen, there's a lot of fine people over there, and they've helped me, and I like them, but I, I don't need to be hanging out at the Edwin Watts because all you're going to do is spend money on stuff you don't need. Yeah, we had those guys at the pro shop at my club. Oh. They're, they're but not- they'd always try things, and then they'd never. Oh, they never buy it. Yeah. No, they're the worst. Like, you actually, if you're there to run the pro shop and make money. Yeah. You hate those guys. Yeah. They demo things and never give them back. They demo. Oh, they give them back. Hey, I bought that. Don't you start with me. I demoed a club. That's a, he's, It's an inside joke he just yeah. laid on you people there. Yeah, but it's also true. That happens. Like, guys are like, well, yeah, Mr. Richards always demos and then and he never forgets. brings it back. No, yeah. I demoed the, uh, what did I demo that? Uh, Fairway. Uh, it was a fairway metal, wasn't it's it? It's a fairway metal. I, I I loved it so much that I kept it. It's a tight lies Adams or whatever that is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, Adams does great work with they, those particular They're not clubs. fooling around. No, that's, that's their specialty. They've always, they've been good in a wedge game, never anything else. But they can get you some hybrids, some fairway woods, and some wedges. They're pretty good. You know there was a Twilight Zone magazine? Really? Yeah, back in the day. There was a Twilight Zone magazine for people who just couldn't wait to, to, to the next Twilight Zone came out. They'd want to read about Twilight Zone. Were you a TV guide guy? Oh, yeah, we had the TV guide. Yeah. My dad, I think, still has the TV guide. He can't give it up. He's one of these guys. I I joke. I make fun of him every time I go to Georgia to see him. I'm like, Dad, why do you have the TV guide? He has has his chair. Yeah. So he's got his chair. I've seen it. And his chair, as you know, is set up. Now, he's an avid reader, which is great. So he's got his books. Uh, He loves to (laughs) read. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about something that makes me laugh. But he'll take the TV guide. I didn't even know they still made a TV guide. No, I didn't. I had no idea. It's a website. He'll now, take right? the TV guide and he likes to do the highlighting of things that are going to be on, like like we're in 1952. Oh my god! It's the dumbest damn thing you've ever seen. Oh, I'm like, Dad, you know you don't have to do that. That was a creature comfort though, because when I would stay in New York for a couple of weeks at a time, summer visits in high school, you didn't have the you know the guides, especially if you stay out in Breezy Point, which is just you get your channels and that's it. But I would look for the sports and what channel the Mets would be on. It was such a comfort to have that. So I could understand how one got addicted to it, say, in a decade when you really had to have that and nothing else existed. Because for a week, I'd be like, all right, give me the daily. Let me see what what channel we're on today. And it was always there. It was very comforting. Yeah, I could see that. By the way, this started by me saying that Peter King is leaving SI. And I know we roll our eyes these days at Peter King. Peter King was instrumental in helping grow the NFL, and they owe him a debt of gratitude forevermore because of what he did. Uh, If you go back, um, he started covering football at just the right time. So some of it was timing. He got lucky a little bit there as it became North America's most popular sport. And two, he, you know, he did embrace a different style of storytelling and journalism. He ended up creating the Monday morning quarterback, which we all have read forever. And that started all the way back in 1997. Does he still have the scars under his eyes from when your mom pimp slapped him? <laughs> That's true. Fat Peter uh, ended up becoming a whole thing on this show because my mom routinely dominated the guy that's covered the NFL forever in a day in the one-on-one picks, but she did not dominate me. No, we both took turns dominating Peter, and then I dominated Mom. But uh, she did vanquish Schultz. She did. Fat Peter. She got you one year, too. One year. One time. That's impressive. It's kind of devastating. I was really, I really enjoyed the undefeated streak. Well, I she to. beat Peter King. Well, so did everybody that I know of. But anyhow, he did write good stories about the NFL for a long time. Just, just It's like, uh, that's the most simplest form of descriptor that you could have. That guy wrote good stories occasionally about the NFL. <laughs> All right. Good job, Peter King. Chef Garrett Show, 97 at ESPN Radio. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. 
We got this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men on a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. this. Smoother, bolder, sharper, comfier, smarter, fiercer, tougher, stronger, longer, greater, prouder. Gravely Zero Turn Mowers. TNT. Don't wait. Call today. ADT. Always there. Now everywhere. Requires 36-month monitoring contract. Early termination, taxes, and cell fees apply. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADT.com. Commercial lawnmowers don't have odometers. But if they did, you might be surprised to see you could be mowing thousands of miles a year. That's why Gravely zero-turn mowers are built for the long haul. So when you're mowing the equivalent of Miami through Kentucky bluegrass country, all the way to Seattle, and back again every year. You can count on your Gravely Zero Turn Mower to get the job done, mile after mile. Gravely, built to mow the distance. Over 150 new Zero Turns in stock. Visit TNTSupercenter.com to view inventory and pricing. TNT. In Thomasville, Georgia. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to give you special savings on the toughest tractors and utility vehicles on earth during the Mahindra Red Tag Sale. Hurry in for up to $7,900 in cash back and red tag savings. Only from Mahindra. Up to $7,900 in cash back savings. Visit TNTSupercenter.com to view selection. Offer with approved credit. See dealer for details. Program restrictions may apply. TNT. In Thomasville, Georgia. Tee it up at the Edwin Watts Golf Shop's 50th anniversary sale this Friday through Sunday. Score three dozen Strixon Tri-Speed Tour Balls or two pairs of Ben Hogan shorts for just $50. Take $50 off the Callaway 200 Rangefinder, and when you trade in your old clubs, you'll get a 50% trade-in value bonus towards your new club purchase. Some manufacturer restrictions apply. And while you're there, register to win a $500 shopping spree. Only at Edwin Watts, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers since 1968. Time to check out our buddy Joe over at Truck and Car Concepts. What's going on, man? Hey, man, what's going on with you guys? Well, here's the deal. I heard that you were gone all day as you were out tinting the house. Yes, sir. His customer was having a big heat problem uh, on the west side of the house in the afternoon. Uh, we went over, did the estimate, decided to do the east side of the house as well. Let me tell you something. We knocked out 79% of the heat energy, which is going to totally knock down the electricity bill. Not only that, but she had some really nice paintings that were fading out in the uh, living room. 99% ultraviolet ray elimination. So it would fade out like carpets and drapes and furniture and stuff? Not only that, but it also fades out those expensive hardwood floors. So uh, window filming the house is uh, is nothing but a plus. Uh, it, like I said, it comes and, and it takes down uh, the heat energy, uh, and that's, you know, bottom line. So even though the place is called Truck and Car Concepts, you could throw house in there, too. <laughs> we can do houses, planes, trains, or automobiles, man. <laughs> if it's got glass, we tin it. Truck and Car Concepts. 656-8800. Give us a call. This week at Tim Lizzie's Cantina, come celebrate Drinko de Mayo. April 30th through May 6th, there will be week-long food and drink specials. And to top off the week, a huge fiesta on Saturday, May 5th. Tim Lizzie's Drinko de Mayo party will feature live music, DJs, $5 shots, margarita and beer specials from 1800 and Corona. And while you're here, choose from more than 25 gourmet soft tacos, shareable dips, crisp salads, and hot skillets. Come celebrate Drinko de Mayo with Tim Lizzie's in College Town. Tim Lizzie's reminds you to enjoy the day responsibly and always designate a driver. Woohoo! Banditos! Huh? Where? Banditos burritos, baby! Driving every day from the Amerigas Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is 97.9 ESPN Radio, WTSM, Woodville, Thomasville, Tallahassee. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. The Western Conference takes over in the NBA playoffs tonight here on ESPN Radio. Our coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. For Game 3 between the Warriors and the Pelicans in New Orleans, Golden State leads the series 2-0. That game to be the first of a doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. The nightcap will be Game 3 for the Rockets and Jazz in Salt Lake City. That series tied at 1. Last night in Toronto, another epic performance by LeBron James. 43 points and 14 assists. 
doing most of his damage from the outside as the Cavaliers grabbed a 2-0 series lead on the road against the Raptors. ESPN's Brian Windhorst. There was a certain point where LeBron was like, I wonder how crazy I can get with this. I wonder if I shoot the ball 18 feet in the air, if it'll go in. I wonder if I turn to my left, it'll go in. I wonder if it'll turn to my right, it'll go in. He was just completely having fun with them. And uh, look, there's going to be certain nights where LeBron's just going to throw in shots and you're just going to have to shake your head and you know, give it to him. Brian Windhorst on Golick and Wingo. The Milwaukee Bucks may meet with as many as 10 coaching candidates in their first round of interviews. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reports among those the Bucks will interview are former Hornets coach Steve Clifford, former Pelicans coach Monty Williams, and Spurs assistant Ettore Messina. Angels first baseman Albert Pujols needs one hit for number 3,000. The team starts a five-game road trip tonight with the first of a three-game series in Seattle. Golf, Tiger Woods shoots a two-over 73 today with only one birdie on his last hole of the day. The ninth, Woods right on the projected cut line at two-over par. Now, it's time for your Atlanta Braves update. Thursday afternoon at City Field, the Braves offense continued its red-hot start to the season, completing a three-game sweep of the Mets by a score of 11 to nothing. The Braves jumped on Jason Vargas for three in the first on a two-out RBI double from Nick Markakis and two-run homer from Kurt Suzuki. Atlanta would add three more in the top of the fifth, highlighted by a tape measure shot from Ronald Acuna. First pitch swinging, Acuna hits one deep down the left field line, streaking through the sky and into the second level. And Ronald Acuna belts a home run deep out of the ballpark. Left fielder Cespedes didn't even move, didn't even turn around. Ben Ingram with the call you heard right here on the Braves Radio Network. Nick Marcakis would also add a two-run blast to right his fifth of the season. That would be all Julio Tehran would need as he cruised through seven scoreless innings, allowing a couple of walks with six strikeouts. Over the three-game series sweep, the Braves outscored the Mets by a margin of 21-2, to totaling 41 hits over the three-game series. Braves now head home off a 7-3 and road trip and welcome the Giants to town for a three-game series starting tonight as it'll be Mike fulton on the mound for Atlanta, Chris Stratton for San Francisco. First pitch is set for 7.35 p.m. Eastern. With the Braves, I'm Kevin McAlpin for the Atlanta Braves Radio Network. Live from the Amerigas Propane Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. It's Libations Friday. Brought to you by Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill. Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill on Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Jeff Cameron Show, at least for this week, in a glorious Libations Friday to you and yours. I'm Jeff, that's Tom. Young Matthew directing the show as well. We're online, ESPNTallahassee.com. That's where you go to listen live via the streaming. That is free, always. Don't miss anything. If you do, all three hours are going to be posted both to iTunes and in our own audio vault. You can email the show if you like, JCS. At 979ESPNRadio.com. On Twitter, it's at Jay Cameron Show, the WTSM app. Good for your mobile devices. And uh, use that. You'll also find archived audio there. If you want to watch the show, go to YouTube, ESPN Tallahassee. By the way, Florida State heading to Clemson. Ordinarily, that game would be tonight. It's not. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday series. And, uh, of course, for Florida State, top 15 in the country, 31 and 14 now on the year 13 and 10 in the ACC. Clemson for their part number 9 in the country, 34 and 11, 17 and 7 in the ACC. This would be a pivotal series in the Atlantic Division. Uh Saturday and Sunday the games will stream on the ACC Network Extra. Well, Monday's game series finale uh series finale is national on ESPNU. How about that? Florida State on television. It's a rarity to say the least. Florida State won the series last year against the then number four Tigers, winning the final two games right here in our own backyard. Just three weekends remain, by the way, in the regular season. Florida State and Clemson are both fighting for a national seed. So, in truth, there is an awful lot on the line. Clemson has the number 10 RPI. Uh, FSU has the number 11 RPI. Yeah. Um, 
This is big. You can't cinch a national seed or clinch no, one, but no. you can sure as heck lose one this weekend. So it's a big one. So it's Drew Parrish, um, and that is uh, what Saturday. And then Jacob Hennessy goes for Clemson. He's four and two with a three two eight. Parrish is three and zero with a two six three. Saturday will be Carp. Uh, seven and three, two eight three ERA for against Crawford. That's Brooks Crawford for Clemson. He's five and two. Big righty, three five four ERA. And then, uh, I think we have a TBA, don't we? Uh, Van Van Eyck, man. Is it Van Eyck? I, yeah. I think he might be. He'll be involved. Well, you got Cole Sands rehabbing an injury, so uh, there's a thought that he might be able to start on Monday. Maybe we'll see how desperate the game is, too. Right, the situation. I yeah. think that might help dictate things. But we'll know by Monday when we do the show uh, a lot about where we stand and whether or not we're just going to be happy to host a region or that we're still eyeing two weekends here in Tallahassee, which would be fantastic. It would be fantastic. By the way, C.J. Van Eck, who you mentioned, um, you know, he struck out 10, allowed just one run um, while pitching seven and a third innings uh, against Miami. That's doing some yeah. things. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, I would think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting if they get him to emerge and become a – Fairly dominant figure in the rotation. Uh, and, you know, let's not overlook it. Mike Martin is tied with the late Augie Garrido uh, for the most wins in college baseball history. So if he if he gets it on Saturday, uh, it's cause for celebration. 1,975 is what he's at right now. Over 39 seasons at Florida State. Um, I, I was sitting back thinking about that the other day. I, I Again, I do hate that this doesn't feel – as big as it should feel. It doesn't. Not to me, anyhow. I, I And I don't mean that as a uh, as, as, as a way of disparaging Mike Martin or Florida State baseball at all. I, it's just Florida State baseball has grown uh, stagnant to an extent, and, and, and I don't think it's as popular and as many people are as invested in it as, as there were even just, say, five to seven years ago. And I can't explain that, but I think that's true. I think it's the rise of Florida, perhaps. I don't I don't know. Well, it's that and the Holton injury, I think, really undercut a lot of what we were hoping for this season. Yeah, because he's a local kid. You're right. Well, and we're on the brink of, you know, working our way into a national seat conversation if you're able to take two out of three this weekend against Clemson. I mean, you'd still be in the conversation for favorite to, you know, play at home on your way to Omaha, but... It just, when you lose your guy, who's going to be a two-way player. Yeah, it was a big deal. That's a big deal. And then, of course, yes, Florida is on its uh, its, its encore season for winning a national title, something we've never been able to do. That, those We talked about it uh, about a month ago. Those ingredients, they're all real. Uh, it doesn't help either Florida State baseball's cause, even though Mike Martin is as big a knoll as there is. That basketball goes to the Elite Eight. That Willie Taggart is starting as you I know, think a that's first-time really head coach. probably what it is in a weird way. I mean, we were obsessed last year with what the hell is going on with football, and and also, of course, the season for baseball at least halfway through was notable in that they weren't playing well at all. But somewhere in there, there was a lot of momentum lost, and uh, for baseball, and and I get it's just college baseball in the big picture. Even when people are locked in, it is still very niche. It is just college baseball. I got you. Uh, but it is something that I've always been passionate about, and I try to be as honest as I can on these airwaves so that uh, we can connect to people, frankly. And I just don't feel that right now that I did. And and I care as a no, I care, and I've loved that program for a very long time, and I still do. I just it's it does feel sort of. I think the other thing is, and, I, and let's just say it. I want this record to happen. Obviously, I hope it happens uh, tomorrow. That'd be great. And Coach Martin, as you just correctly noted, there isn't a bigger knoll out there. This guy loves this university. He played here. He's coached here. He has given his life to this university without question. And that's to be celebrated because I, I think even if you want to see a new coach in here, which many people do, you can still appreciate what a great and loyal knoll he's been and how he's represented this program. Yeah, I know. He hadn't won a national title, but he's won everything else there is to win, and he cares about the garnet and the gold. So we celebrate that, but I don't like that we don't have a succession plan in place and we haven't announced anything at all. So if you feel like maybe if this record happens, that that will be almost immediately announced. Maybe. I don't know. But something Is needs- he going to gun for 2,000? Well, right. And I, I think there's some apprehension here. I, I do. I sense that. It's like, all right, good, good, got the record. All right. What are we doing? 
Are you are you sticking around again for another year or two? Well, even if it's another year, just say it and then have it have it cleanly, you know, declared what the 2020 season is going to be about. I think it's very important for recruiting purposes. You cannot continue to fall further behind Florida. You've got to have a plan in place. If it's junior, fine. He needs to be able to tell people that when he goes and sits in living rooms and, and is trying to recruit. And if it's not, well, then everybody needs to know that too. I mean, that would kind of come as a shock to me. Believe me, behind the scenes, this is a uh, – yeah, I'm not going to get into it today. I don't feel like it. But this is there's a battle brewing, man. That's going to be a weird situation. You have some powerful people who feel very differently. You've got people who are all in, and it's going to be junior, and they'll put their money where their mouth is, and they want that to happen, and they are voicing that. And there are people who are equally as powerful with their money and their influence who are saying no way, no how. So that is an infighting thing waiting to happen. It is, it's is—it's already happening. I'll just let you know that. Yeah, I know we're not going to go there. For me, I just his resume is worthy. I don't know what more, you know, the argument needs to be there. His name If his name was Smith, he'd be the coach. I think that's correct. Because of what he's done independent of the name. Yeah, I think that's correct, yes. But I can tell you, man, just from having casual conversations with people around this community, around Florida State, that – Boy, does that evoke a passionate retort. I mean, and, and you and I are in the same Still camp Still pissed here. off about Bobby. I mean, I, I mean some, of, some of it is that, but some of it's not that. Some of it's not that. I, it's That's an interesting story. That's an interest, but it's a subset. It's not really anything that's worth our time. But I'm finding this out as now a dad whose son plays baseball. And I've said this to you before. Local sports, local communities, local outlets and organizations, whether it's soccer, whether it's baseball, whether it's basketball, I mean, this stuff all gets very political. The people involved, it's amazing. I mean, uh, if, if it's soccer, for example, are you playing Warner, are you playing Tottenham, are you playing, yeah, who, what camp are you in? And the people whose kids are in separate, I mean, it's passionate, it's crazy, right? I never knew that until my kids started playing. I was like, what? It's little kid soccer. What the yeah. hell? It's it's nuts. They're kicking the ball, and it's you know sometimes accurate and sometimes terrible. But it's like your allegiance to those things. Oh, it's geez. oh, you would loathe it. I do. I laugh at it. I I refuse to get involved with that stuff. I don't get into that. To me, it's do you do a good job coaching these kids? Are they having fun? Are they learning something? Good, good. I don't care where you're at. Right. Yeah, good. There's two hours of energy that they're expending. Right, and they're fun learning and something. Learning. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's all I care about. It's not a matter of what bumper sticker I'm going to put on my car so you see that I'm clearly in this. I mean, it's oh. ridiculous. But that's what goes on. And in baseball, Tom, it's huge. In the South in general, but in Tallahassee, it is huge. It's a big deal. And that goes all the way to the top, all the way up to, to Martin. And, and and how people feel about different high schools and coaches and camps and little leagues. I mean, you got Levy, you got all these different places. Travel ball is crazy. Buddy, I get it. You know, as for some people, that's as important as the Florida Florida State rivalry is to, you know, Knowles. But good God, people. Oh, good. I'm glad you've got the perspective. It's the same one I have, man. It amazes me though. It does. It amazes me. And uh, it's a soap opera in and of itself. It's a, it's a fascinating thing. All right, we'll move on from that. Jeff Cameron, show 97.9 ESPN Radio. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. Smoother. 
bolder, sharper, comfier, smarter, fiercer, tougher, stronger, longer, greater, prouder. Gravely Zero Turn Mowers. TNT. Nice Tire and Auto, your trusted Goodyear dealer. Nice Tire and Auto, just minutes away from FSU campus. Are you ready to experience an awesome fishing expedition? Sea Quarters Marina is home to several great charter services. All charters are customized based upon the types of fishing opportunities available and the type of fishing the customer requests. The Northwest Gulf Coast offers a variety of different angling adventures thanks to unspoiled back county islands and crystal clear flats. For more information regarding charters, call Sea Quarters Marina at 697-8400 or online at seaquartersmarina.com. Widden Glass takes care of Tallahassee business. Local contractors know Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. They prefer Widden Glass because of their precise window glass replacement, masterful shower enclosures, and storefront glass. Widden Glass will take care of you to your complete satisfaction. That's been Widden's way of doing business for over 70 years. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. We've done hundreds of storefronts in the Tallahassee area. That's why Widden is known for taking care of business. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Tee it up at the Edwin Watts Golf Shop's 50th anniversary sale this Friday through Sunday. Score three dozen Srixon Tri-Speed Tour Balls or two pairs of Ben Hogan shorts for just $50. Take $50 off the Callaway 200 Rangefinder, and when you trade in your old clubs, you'll get a 50% trade-in value bonus towards your new club purchase. Some manufacturer restrictions apply, and while you're there, register to win a $500 shopping spree. Only at Edwin Watts, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers since 1968. This is the Jeff Cameron Show. Jeff Cameron Show. On 97.9 ESPN Radio. If you've yet to call to uh, purchase your MyPillow, you need to do it now. Right now. Or not. I like my pillow, and that's why I tell you about it every day. It stays cool all night. That's my favorite part. It's also big. I like that too. It comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like the pillow, you can send it back and you get your money back. Um, you can even wash it, and uh, it's made right here in the United States of America. So there you go. Uh, and here's how you save money. Ordering my pillow. Go to mypillow.com, click on the four pack special, and enter the promo code 979 ESPN. Also, you can give them a call if you don't want to use the internet. The internet could spook you. In the United States. So call 1 800 944 6596. That's 800 944 6596. The promo code is 979 ESPN. Here's, here's what you're going to get if you do it you get two my pillow premium pillows and two go anywhere pillows for half off. I didn't even get that. I just got two giant my pillows. I should ask them about what's the deal. Where are my go anywhere pillows? I think my pillow can be a go anywhere pillow, but how about one of those four packs and I'll give you the anywheres and I'll keep the other two. There you go. What do you say? I like it. Half off. Go to mypillow.com, click on the four pack special, enter the promo code 979 ESPN. We can call them today 800-944-6596. Don't forget use the promo code 979 ESPN. Jeff email Subject, lessons learned, spring takeaways for each top 25 team. FSU not ranked in ESPN's top 25. Didn't expect top 10, but never thought totally out of it. Uh, yours or Seminole Headlines opinion? Well, that'll be mine. Is that because they're not confident of Willie Taggart's Saturday talents? Or is it because of the lack of talent Jimbo left? Or is it something else? I think it's based on question marks at quarterback, the season that Florida State just had, which was a six-loss campaign, um, and the uncertainty uh, that comes with a new staff. 
Um, I don't really think it can be anything other than, though, the fact that this team lost six games last year. I, I think a lot of these, especially this far in advance, top 25s, are done by people that certainly aren't on the ground here. They're not looking at this team practice in the spring. They didn't maybe see the spring game. They're not looking at uh, the kind of talent that comes back here. And as I think if they did, without question, uh, you would have a case where Florida State would be in your top 25. There's just too much talent here. Uh, They're good enough to be a top 20 team. That, you know – those rankings don't necessarily uh, bother me. I don't care if we're in the top 25 or not in the top 25. What I would care more about is the talent. Are we good enough to be a team that makes a run to finish the year somewhere near that top 10? And I think the talent's there. The schedule is very difficult. And so, again, I don't know. I mean, according to some calculations, it's the most difficult schedule in the country. So you're a six-loss team about to embark on, on a new campaign with a new staff and a new system, playing the toughest schedule in the country. Some writers might see that as a mountain to climb and thus leave you out of the top 25. I wouldn't. I think Florida State is going to get an awful lot out of kids that they didn't get a lot out of a year ago. The situation is going to be healthier. Uh, The players' mindset better because of that situation being healthier, the environment being changed the way that it has. So kids that, you know, found themselves in a frustrating situation, kids that maybe checked out because of the disaster that was last year's campaign and the situation with the coaches uh, and the rumors that began to swirl that this wasn't going to be intact starting, you know, this offseason, you probably didn't get everything out of these kids. Um, I say probably. I know they didn't get everything out of these kids. If you get if you get this talent playing to the best of its ability, week in and week out, giving their best efforts, locked in and on point, on message, and believing in one another and the staff, Florida State will win enough games to finish in the top twenty-five. Period. That's true. The one thing that you know, and this is what we do in the off season, is you go back and forth and. The one thing I'll wonder, and I can't know until we see it, is where are we going to be weak? Every staff has a weak point, you know, so maybe it's something different than we've just been penciling in every year under Jimbo's staff. Well, we're going to be good here. And then with this staff, they don't develop as well. That's the other thing. Yeah, you can't know that, right? So we, we, we don't know. We have no way of knowing. I, 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 I wouldn't even venture a guess. This staff is really well thought of by people in the coaching industry. Like they, The staff put together by Willie Taggart is looked upon by other coaches as, hmm, Willie did a good job. He's got a good representation there. You know, Walt Bell is an up-and-coming coach. So says everybody in college football. There, there, there's no getting around that. That's all well. He's a, an extremely well thought of coach. Uh, many of these assistants fall in that category. Maybe not as future head coaches like Walt Bell, who he will be a head coach. But those other guys have made their bones. You know, they, they, they have uh, uh, their bona fides, if you will. I mean, th- these guys have done it in other places as far as recruiting and coaching. Uh, we, we have one of the best receiver coaches in the country. Um, if, you, if you look at what we just came from. Yeah. Well, and what we're going to ask the receivers to do as well. You know, I don't know how good, you know, Coach Kelly will be with technicalities, and but we don't need side adjusts, you know, at, at least not nearly as many as, as Jimbo. He's going to be a hell of a recruiter. He was going to be initially, right? He was thought to be somebody who's going to be behind the scenes, the director of recruiting for mm-hmm. Florida State, and they mm-hmm. said, no, you're going to come on the field. So we'll see there. I, I just wonder, too, it's a fundamental question. Willie's a bright mind that has adapted from one system to another. That shows a willingness and, and an understanding both at the same time. You're about to match wits with the best of the best. That's the other thing, too, here. You know, if you're talking about both offensive and defensive coordinators, and Willie serves as the primary offensive coordinator because he's going to be calling the plays and he's going to be heavily involved in installation during the week, and then Harlan Barnett on the other side. Harlan was thought to be the one that was installing Michigan State's game plans week to week last year. Okay, that's good. Results were good. But here you go. Brent Venables is waiting for you, Coach Taggart and Coach Bell. And then... On the other side of it, Clemson's offense is nothing uh, that you can just take for granted. 
And Mark Richt is a pretty smart offensive mind, even if he's not calling the... Well, no, he is calling the plays now. There's just some challenges at a brand new level. And let's not ignore that either. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, as you correctly noted, we can't know whether or not they'll pass those tests necessarily in a way that is always favorable. We, we think based on their track record, we have enough evidence to project mostly positive things here. I, I think that's true. Harlan Barnett is as respected a defensive coordinator as there is in the country and coached elite defenses at Michigan State, and it's not like the Big Ten can't play. Right. I don't want to lead us to a dead end of I don't know, because that's obvious, but we're trying to talk about what the context clues tell us, at least as we're going well, on the ride together. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I think with this staff, uh, there's a large contingent of Knowles that it, we're still in the honeymoon period, and we believe it's going to be an upgrade across the board. That's just not realistic either. Well, we do know Greg Fry will do a much better job than our previous offensive line coach. Rick Trickett was failing us miserably, Yes. period. So Greg Fry will come from Michigan as he did and will do a better job, period. He just will. That's already established. It's going to happen. Um, I think David Kelly, given what we're running and given his reputation that precedes him, is going to be an upgrade as a receiver's coach. It'd be, it'd be very difficult not to be, given that we've had two guys drafted uh, under the previous, uh, that's what, true. Okay, and Dossie did develop Tate though at the end. Okay, he's had three successes. Then maybe I mean I mean, I, well I don't know. I mean, where does Jimbo's difficulties end and Lawrence Dossie's inability to develop talent begin? I think that that's a tough question. I think I think that we we're going to see an upgrade. Lawrence Dossie um, was on that staff for for something involved being a good receivers coach that that was understood well, that's what kelly's here for too but i agree yes but but he was not good at recruiting receivers we had a, a little run there at the end and yeah campbell uh, campbell getting hurt hurt us too the the other reason he was on that staff though was he was a guy that related to players exceptionally well and was the good cop on that staff that's what he was there to do that's really the role he played it's why jimbo didn't want him gone despite those lack of successes in recruiting he wanted that guy on staff because that guy could talk to the players in a way that Jimbo couldn't or other staff members couldn't. Um, so I think we're going to see an upgrade there. Walt Bell, um, is he an upgrade over Jimbo Fisher? Well, they run two different systems. They're different offensive minds. No, I think Jimbo Fisher is uh, an elite offensive mind. But with the way that the offense had grown stagnant and his refusal – to incorporate elements of uh, other kinds of offenses into his system and modernize a little bit uh, what he was doing the way that Nick Saban allowed his offensive coordinators to. Um, you know, I think I think Walt Bell's going to do great. I won't say he's a better mind, but I think he's going to do great. Um, well, Odell's Odell. Harlan Barnett is going to be a better defensive coordinator, I do think. I think it's almost a safe assumption based on what he's already done in his career, based on what he's proven himself to be at Michigan State. Um We'll see if Willie Taggart turns out to be a better head coach. That I don't know. Right. That's a big one. That's a big one. That I don't know. But as we go through these coaches, um, I think you're going to agree that Raymond Woody is going to do a better job with the linebackers than Bill Miller did. Yes. Uh, so as we do this, and any, I shouldn't say anybody. Lots of people could be a running back coach, so we'll just we'll stop here. But, but where I'm going with all this is I do think we have, you know, real evidence from previous stops and products proven at those places that suggest this staff is going to do, or these members of the staff anyhow, are upgrades at several spots. So, yeah, I several agree. spots. I just, there's going to be warts that we don't know until we see them and we go, oh, well, I wish they wouldn't do this. Though. And there are warts of system. Yeah. You know, just like Jimbo. I mean, there, there are things that, you know, are part of what you run that leave you susceptible to other things. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's the game. That's the beauty of the game. Everybody has a system or a belief that they want to run a certain way. And they know, even those people will tell you, yeah, well, we're running a pro style, so we're not able to do this, this, and this because we don't practice it. Mm -hmm. It's not part of our system. I agree. Not to sound like cowherd, but I feel like I'm moving from you know, a shack of a house to a house I think is perfect, and the appraiser says you're good to go, you buy it, something's going to happen. You know, there's going to be a leak somewhere. I, I don't disagree, yeah. So I just I, don't, I, like, there are a lot of people who believe it's, it's uh, you know, across the board, we're going to be better everywhere, everything is good. That's just not the way it works. Something's going to come up where we, by middle well, of October, go, oh, well, 
we need to get better here. What are they doing in this position or pushing this area? I think that's going to be the byproduct of a system that you and I aren't in love with. We, 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 you know, I think when something's broken, like this was broken, oh yeah, that just about anybody that comes in with a fresh idea and a new way of doing things is going to be an upgrade. You know, and and eventually when Willie Taggart is shown the door many years from now, hopefully. That will be an upgrade, too, because it will mean that something was broken and it needs to be fixed. And almost always that next guy meets some success pretty quickly just by fixing the stuff that was wrong from the previous group. That's an important nuance, an upgrade over the current situation or over the best of what right, came before you. Right, right, right. So the upgrade over the current situation is, to me, self-evident. That has already happened. I already see that. Yeah. Um, so strength and training too. That's a big one. Well, that's, that may be the biggest, yeah. oddly enough. I did not realize until after he was gone and I get along with Vic Valoria. Vic, Vic's one of the few guys on that staff that would reach out to us. Now that he's not here, I can say it. He'd reach out to us. Not, not, not revealing secrets. He didn't give any intel. No, he didn't give any sensitive. intel or anything like that, but he would, he, he clearly liked the show. He, he had fun with it. He used to challenge me to come over there, and he'd, he'd ask me to if I wanted to do one of the workouts and he'd put me through it, right? He would want to put me through it. but So I always liked him, but he was careful, right? I don't want to re- say that he was giving me intel. He, he wasn't. Uh, I wish he would have. But he, he, I thought, was... You wouldn't be hearing about him right now if he did. Right. I thought he was well-respected, and maybe he was when he got here. But he wasn't by the time he left. Not by the people over there who are doing the workouts. Not by the players and not by some of the people who observed that. Right. And there was the talk that some things were antiquated. And certain attention to detail in some areas was desperately lacking. Well, if that's true, and I can only assume that it is based on some of the people that have told me that, I'm very excited to find out uh, what we can do and the, and the heights we can reach in player development um, because I, I didn't realize that was a problem. That, that that was lost to me. I did not know that. It's our own version of Coach O is the strength and conditioning coach here at Florida State now. Uh, the name will learn in time, especially as our players look bigger, stronger, and faster, but it's a little tough to pronounce, and we're only in May, so we'll learn it by the time we get to the fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I, I get excited about the idea of um, – of, of seeing immediately uh, the, these upgrades as we talk about it. I do think that's going to happen because, again, anytime something's broken and somebody comes in with a fresh idea and a new way of doing things and kids buy in, you immediately see an uptick in production. And so I, I just think that's going to happen. And I also think by simplifying what we do, you're going to put athletes in space and they're going to make plays because that's what athletes do when they're put in space. Uh, in the game of football, if I'm faster and I've got – uh, a greater depth of talent than you, and I get that talent out in the open, especially at the skill positions, obviously, um, we're going to see you know home runs. Yeah, but that leads to the next big question, right, which is when you go against the best of the best and they can match what you do, simply put, mm-hmm. what do you do then? How do you, well, right. how do you manufacture a way to score points when you have to because Clemson can, Clemson can match up with you player for player? Or in a given year, Miami has – uh, a veteran secondary, and we have young receivers. What do you do then? How do you mitigate that problem? Oh, yeah. How oh, inventive yeah. are you in those adjustments, moments? Right? Yeah, yeah. These are things we're going to be excited to see. That Now, that's different, right? That we, that we can't know until it happens. And so I can project a lot of things with pretty great certainty. I think certain things that I said are unassailable. But, yes, there are the unknowns and in-game adjustments. I don't know. I haven't watched enough USF. I didn't watch enough Oregon, and I certainly didn't see any Western Kentucky. So I have no idea how he is at in-game adjustments. They adjusted to our ass in 2016 when uh, I think we packed it in in the second half down there. Oh, but we were they beating score their every, ass. They scored on every possession in the second, second half. Second half, but that we were beating their ass senseless. I mean, that game got out of control. Yeah. I mean, that was the Jimbo helmet slam. Yeah, that's Remember right. That? Yeah. It was also Willie saying uh, upon taking this job that 
those guys look like mutants. I need some of those guys. Yeah, he said to his staff, well, someday we'll have those guys. Right, right. He dreamt of having the kinds of players that you can get at Florida State, and now he's in the process of getting them, bringing them here, and he's doing so, I might say, exceptionally well at a, at a very high rate. That's good. That we know is also something that I think is going to certainly not fall off. And based on what happened the last couple of years with Jimbo, recruiting had begun to fall off. So, uh, yeah, this is this is exciting. By by far, I know a lot of people are reassured by the fact that Willie is a Florida State guy, and that's great. And I I appreciate that, and it makes it all the better. It's like when Odell used to speak at the Car Museum every February. The number one reassuring thing to me is that we're going to recruit. So if this experiment does not work, we're going to have players for the next yeah. guy. We're not going to be in a lost decade where somebody has to go flip art like what Mullen has to do right now. That's correct. Mullen's task is fundamentally different than what Willie's is. Or Scott Frost taking over Nebraska. Woo! My God. Years of neglect, Tom. Years and years of neglect that he's got to fix. What is this, disrepair? Yeah, this is a state of disrepair that I don't know that I can solve with the relative quickness that you're expecting, gentlemen. But I will, I will damn sure do my best. Hey, so the thing about that, though, is real quick on, on Willie and, and being a Florida State guy. A lot of that is, you're right, rah, rah. And a lot of that does play to the garnet and gold-colored glasses that we all have on. But I think there's a tangible effect to that, too. I, I, I think it resonates more with players and certainly those who stroke checks to the university. That I think you'll see some things where that is a legitimate help. I'd love to see a study five years from now, and it's trailing 10 years. So the first five years, Jimbo's era. Mm -hmm. Former players and money cut to the university. That's right. And then how about five years from now? Yes. How yes. much money will former players spend on this university? Well, and the other thing about that is we always resent it, and I wonder how much it affected players, and I wonder how much it affected boosters and alumni. And you're right. This study would tell us that, and we'll find out real soon. But we resented every time Jimbo slipped up and said, you all. And he did it a lot. The lack of we is important there. That pissed me off every single time. I never got over it. I'm like, we're paying you over $5 million a year. We can't get a we? It's always you guys? It was like a distance that didn't make any sense. Jeff Cambridge Show, 97.9 ESPN Radio. Sorry, boys, I did not have time to pack. We got this. It's right here, guys. We got this. I thought I could handle it. We, we got, got this. this. Moving doesn't have to be a hassle. Call us first at Two Men in a Truck. No matter the move, home or business, we'll make it a smooth one. I forgot something. <laughs> we, we got, got this. this. Landowners, your Mahindra dealer is ready to help you save during Mahindra's red tag sale. Enjoy up to $7,900 in tractor cash back and savings or utility vehicle savings up to $1,700. Plus, Mahindra's industry-leading warranties still come standard. So hurry in for Mahindra's red tag savings. TNT. When you're in need of auto repairs, look no further than Nice Tire and Auto Service. Nice has been in business for 16 years with long-term, knowledgeable sales associates. They have the latest wheel balancing machine in the industry. And for passenger vehicles, they service AC, brakes, suspension, tune-ups, and much more. Never sit through a long wait. Nice Tire and Auto has 10 service bays to get you back on the road quickly. If you have tire problems, check out their large inventory with various Goodyear and Michelin tires. Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Bluntstown Highway, 574 4100. Trusted and proven security and service. Now at a great value. Don't wait. Call today. ADT. Always there. Now everywhere. Requires 36 month monitoring contract. Early termination, taxes, and cell fees apply. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADT.com. 
tee it up at the Edwin Watts Golf Shop's 50th anniversary sale this Friday through Sunday. Score three dozen Strixon Tri-Speed Tour Balls or two pairs of Ben Hogan shorts for just $50. Take $50 off the Callaway 200 Rangefinder, and when you trade in your old clubs, you'll get a 50% trade-in value bonus towards your new club purchase. Some manufacturer restrictions apply. And while you're there, register to win a $500 shopping spree. Only at Edwin Watts, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers since 1968. The playoffs are here. The Corner Pocket is your home all spring long for all the heart-pounding moments in the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs. It's held in a shot. Corner Pocket on Appalachian Parkway next to Earth Fair is your headquarters for Trivia Tuesdays, Beer Bingo Thursdays, and of course, all the moments you'll never forget. For the championship! The Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, 2475 Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. You have to be up in five hours. Two hours. Six minutes, and you haven't slept a wink. ZQuil Pure Z's is a drug-free blend of botanicals with an optimal dose of melatonin, so you can fall asleep naturally and wake with no next-day grogginess. So tonight, try new ZQuil Pure Z's from the sleep experts at Vicks ZQuil. If you are even Craft Nissan sale has been held over. Right now is the time, and this is the one week of the year you've been waiting for. Announcing a $12 million massive automotive liquidation, over 500 cars, trucks, and SUVs, all priced to sell by the end of the day Monday. All sales are final. No reasonable offers will be refused. First come, first serve. Bring your title and trade in for quickest service. Banks will be represented for on-the-spot financing. Appraisers will be on hand to bid top dollar for your trade. Doors will open at 9 a.m. sharp daily. Choose from over 75 pre-owned vehicles including 15 pre-owned SUVs and 16 pre-owned trucks, Toyotas, Nissans, Hondas, you name it. And remember, first come, first serve. Over 400 brand new vehicles, including 100 new SUVs and 50 new trucks. And all new Nissans have 0% for 60 months with approved financing. See our ad in the Tallahassee Democrat. This event is taking place three-tenths of a mile from Costco on Mayhem Drive in Tallahassee, Florida, on the lot of the Kraft Nissan dealership. All vehicles will be sold by Monday, and when it's over, it's over. Mention this ad. This Kraft Nissan sale positively is... Ends Monday, May 14th. This Day in Sports, brought to you by Super Lube. Super Lube, 19 Tallahassee area locations. Quick, convenient, no appointment necessary. This Day in Sports History. May 4th, 1973. Secretariat won the 99th running of the Kentucky Derby, holding off second place finisher Sham by two and a half legs. Secretariat ran the race in a time of 159 and two fifths, which still stands as the fastest. Secretariat would go on to win the Triple Crown that year and is remembered as one of the greatest thoroughbreds ever. Live from the Amerigas Propane Studios in the capital city of Tallahassee, this is the Jeff Cameron Show on 97.9 ESPN Radio. It's Libations Friday. Brought to you by Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill. Quarter Pocket Bar and Grill on Appalachian Parkway. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Always get me, Tom. I forgot to tell you this. Um, so when you signed up for the athletic, I feel like we're advertising for them lately. Yeah. But anyhow, when you signed up for that, did you just sign up for the trial run? I signed up for. Uh, I mean, it's going to bill me at next year, but I did get the forty percent off. I took the, you know. Yeah. So it'll bill you like fifty nine dollars at the end of the run. Is it at the end of the run or the beginning? I think well, you, I, I think they come up front, man. That's yeah, how no, that, they, they charged me. I'm sure of it. Should ask Gene. I'm but sure he knows. What I forgot. What I forgot. That's, not, that's just true. I thought of something different. Oh. But what what I uh, what I thought about with this was because I did the hey try now for a week for free and see what you think thing. Mm-hmm. Man, that is the smartest move from anybody oh, yeah. with a with a dot com because you never remember when the week is up and they automatically bam. Yeah. They take that card. No, it's all about getting the credit card numbers, man. And now I have worked for two sites here in Tallahassee, both of which have a subscriber fee. And more recently and more uh, prolonged working with Warchant. And I love it when I work with Warchant.com. That's right. Both of those sites will tell you it's all about that free trial. 
Because once you get that number, they're in. They are in. They're in the and system. And nobody remembers. Because people sign up the day before signing day for their 30-day trial, and then, you know, they're like, oh, March rolls around. Whoops. Oh, well, I'll get, you, get them next year. Yeah. Oh, I'll get them never, next year. They're never going to get them next no, year. No, until their card expires. Right. Then they're in the clear. Then they're, they're in the clear. That's right. Yep. By the way, the card expiring is a devastating turn of events. I had that happen. Not not expire, but I, I had to get a new card because, I don't know, I think there was a security breach. Mm -hmm. and And they... The bank reached out to me and said, we'd like you to take this card, activate it now, and get rid of the other one. But I didn't want to get rid of the other one. Yeah. I just wanted them to fix the problem because here's the thing. All my stuff is tied into right. that. Yes. And so now every one of the things that are tied into that is like, oh, sorry, you're screwed. Your subscription to this is gone because we couldn't bill you last month. Or... Sorry, you know, we didn't get to run this, so your Spotify doesn't work. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, one by one, I'm remembering all the damn things that were connected to that card only when the thing that I love gets canceled. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's happened uh, over the years a couple of times with the old podcast, with our podcast service. Really? Yeah. It's, it's not working. Why is it not working? Oh. And, I, you know, I'm like six hours in it. I'm like, why is it not working? <laughs> you get so mad. Then I realize, oh, oh hey, right. dip whatever, yeah. you know, you, your bank sent you a new car, dude. It's the worst. Now, there is a simple solution. I get that. And everybody will send us in the not too distant future something like, oh, hey, this program works perfect, saves all your passwords, does everything. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I just, why don't we do that? I never do it. I never do it. Because I always believe those things can be broken in too. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I conceded, I mean, but I, I do put them in uh, one of my devices. I do won't you? say which, but yes. <laughs> you know. I wonder which one it is. Yeah, it's probably the own fag. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I have little codes for what service I'm using. So I have, like, little codes, and oh, that's my, yeah, login and, and Well, password. listen, I've already accepted that somebody is watching everything we do, oh, either on our phone or computer. Anyhow, so I don't really worry about it at all anymore. You could actually use it. You could have it as your screensaver. Oh. I mean, it really wouldn't make a difference. The things that they hear and see, well, not just with us, but with, you know, people. Yeah, imagine. Good God. It'd be kind of funny. That'd be a kind of a fun job. A little disturbing, but it, yes. Well, very disturbing when you realize what people really do oh. and who they really are and mm. the kinds of things they look up. Indeed. You'd be like, well. Goodness gracious, this is a little bit out there even for me. I don't I don't know. I'm mm. uncomfortable. I'm not gonna monitor Jerry anymore. You, yeah, you've Jerry's, got Jerry, uh, yeah. Jerry Jerry's got some issues. Uh, he looks <laughs> shaky, but I, <laughs> I didn't realize he was full blown. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what the trigger words are. Like, you know, in seven they explored this and it made me laugh because if you went to the library, mm -hmm. I used to always suspect that, right? Holden Caulfield, I mean, once you read that book, and I did, I remember thinking well, I wonder if anybody, I mean, it, does something get triggered in the FBI when you check out that book? If you check out Catcher in the Rye, does yeah. everybody go? Well, that's a conspiracy theory with Mel Gibson. That's what happened, remember? Right. They got the black helicopters flying overhead because he checked out. What did he check out? No, he did. It was, it was uh, Catcher in the Rye? Yeah, Catcher in the Rye. Well, they did it in 7, too. But they, they programmed their guys. To go buy the book when they're in trouble. Oh, right. Like when right, they right. can't figure out what they're supposed, supposed to, do, to do. So they buy the book they and go buy the it book flags it. Yeah. That's hilarious. I, I'm assuming that's true. Could be. I wonder, well, there's the there's the uh, anarchist manual, right? I mean, uh, what's the, the, the anarchist cookbook? That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, anarchist cookbook. I'm sure if you pick that one up. Kids, yeah. kids, no, I'm not trying to no, get you on a list. No, no. Don't go do that. <laughs> but there's the anarchist cookbook. There's Catcher in the Rye. And there's another book about how to make a bomb. I'm sure if you check out any one of those. I was such a terrible kid for, like, little stupid pranks. Did you do that? Did you type into somebody's what computer? I <laughs> See, you grew up in a generation where that existed. Yeah, I yeah. didn't have that. I didn't well, have that. There were no such things. We had a computer science class in seventh grade, and we had to learn Word and PowerPoint, Excel, and mm. we had to do projects, like researching cars and, you know, little fun projects. But at the end of class, you I would type go in to, stuff. I'd go to random people's computers, <laughs> and I'd type in some sites. I'd hit enter, and it took time. You know, it was still broadband, oh, yeah, but it yeah. took time. So I'd hit enter, and then I'd and turn then off leave. the monitor. Oh, so that when they turned it on, they'd see <laughs> the next class. They'd see an awful lot. I was a bandit. They, they never caught me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. I, I may have done that at the library once or twice, oh, too. Oh, that yeah. is hilarious. Uh, don't do that. But no, yeah. Well, you're just assured that somebody will. It's <laughs> great. I did that on my stepdad's computer. He still doesn't know. Really. He doesn't know it was you? Well, he, he wanted, Certain things still pop up. No. He's like, oh, 
Oh, <laughs> why do I get these things? Every now and then this still happens. I don't understand. <laughs> I'll be chuckling. Really? So you get that? It just pops up? He's, I don't know what happened. I, every once in a while, and I can't make it go away. If I click on it, it just pops right. up more. Five more pop up. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can do that with old people. It's, it's just little cruel, things, man. man. Yeah, yeah, you're laughing. You're like, oh no, no, that's not an X. They want you to think yeah, that's, that's an X. Not, that's not, not the X. That's not the X. Man. Hit, man, that just guarantees more. That just uh, that troubles down, man. And the sound, you know, it doesn't no. matter that you don't have it. It's gonna turn <laughs> it up for you're you. Like, what in the world is going on? Here? You're just enjoying an NFL Sunday. And oh, what's going on in the kitchen? Know. Yeah, here we go. Probables. Let's fire it up. It's time for. How you say with the pitching uh, probables? Woo! I'm just relieved not to see Washington. My God, you can have him, Matthew. Jeez, do something to him with it. We couldn't, that's for sure. Cleveland versus New York. Josh Tomlin, CC Sabathia. I'm sure it'll be on TV. What Washington? No, national. The Yankees game. It'll be on national TV. Oh, absolutely, always at the stadium. Phillies, Nats, Nick Pavetta. Come on, Nick Pavetta. Gio Gonzalez goes for the Nats. We got Rockies, Mets, Ramon Marquez, and Zach Wheeler. All right. Wheeler gave up two runs in five innings with nine strikeouts and beating the Padres on Sunday. That's great. For him, that is That like, is a day for the ages. That's eight scoreless for him. It's incredible. Marlins, Reds, ouch. Why Yi Chen, Sal Romano. Why you going? <laughs> Jays, Rays. Ouch. Ooh. J.A. Happ. Andrew Kittredge goes for the Rays. Uh, Giants, Braves, Chris Stratton, Mike Fultonevich. All right. Hey. Welcome back. All right. Red Sox, Rangers, Rick Porcello, Bartolo Colon. Bartolo Colon's uh, picture says, can you believe I'm still here? Just looking at the picture. It says it. Look at me. I'm still here. Fatter than ever. Still pitching. Faced a season-high 27 batters in his last start against the Blue Jays. Bartolo Colon, folks, carries a 2.87 ERA over six outings and four starts. Unbelievable. <laughs> One of the great gifts I've ever gotten to former uh, intern John. That's right. Who is uh, John the part-timer. Got me the Bartolo Colon home run sculpture. Good stuff. Twins, White Sox, Jose Barrios, Carson Fulmer. My Buckos take it on the Brewers, Nick Kingham. Earned a second start after turning in one of the best debut performances in the history of Major League Baseball. Took a perfect game into the seventh. Finished the game giving up one hit. One hit? One blanket hit. That should be a clip we have. Oh, absolutely. Brewers, Junior Guerrero. Cubs cards. Oh, great rivalry. Hey. Jose Quintana goes for the Cubs. Uh, Miles Mikolas goes for the Cardinals. Mikolas. <laughs> Tigers, Royals, Francisco Liriano, Ian Kennedy. Not nearly as fun to say. Dodgers, Padres, Walker Bueller. Oh, oh man. man. I really, I mean, just seeing a Walker makes me laugh. Middle name's Parker. Mm. Padres, Joey Lucchesi. Uh, Astros, D-backs, Garrett Cole, who I'm sure will strike out 20. Chris Medlin goes for the D-backs. Orioles, Athletics, Andrew Kashner, Daniel Mangden. Angels, Mariners, Garrett Richards, Mike Leak. And that is a look at those. Man, Mike Leak is still, good Lord. What in the world is he still doing in the league? Didn't he transition to a position player, I thought? I, he's been around forever, it feels right. like. That's a look at those that shall reside on the bump. All right, all right, all right. So you declined to take the trek out of town. You could chill at the house this weekend, a whole lot of sleeping, maybe a little few video games, a little baseball, some hockey. You know, I'm, this is how I know I'm getting old. I'm looking forward to cleaning the first floor. It needs attention, and we've been traveling every weekend the past three, so I'm not doing a month straight <laughs> I like watching town. you grow older at school because I get such a head start on you. I mean, we do have that 15-year gap, and I crack up because I remember when I first started getting that way where I was like, man, 
Thank God the weekend's here. I can clean up around here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't wait for the smell of the, uh, you know, multi-surface yeah, cleaner in yeah, the kitchen. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, and then you want to sit there for a while right after it's all done. Yep, just look, look at, at it. Look how clean everything is, everybody. <laughs> this is my life. It's Well, uh, <laughs> for two hours now. Yeah. Gonna, tomorrow's Cinco, man. You yeah, gotta, yeah. You can come on over if you want, buddy. Remember, I got the Margaritaville. Margaritaville. Yeah, I know. Unbelievable. Alicia got that for you, didn't she? That's correct. That's just damn wrong. Everybody in the world knows I want one of those things. Still do. Still waiting on it. Still waiting on it. Anybody? Hey, well, you got discounted golf clothes from your boy. I, I'm not mad at you. You've come through in a big way. It's the rest of my friends and family that have failed me miserably. There we go. Okay. It's their fault. I have wanted a damn margarita maker for as long as you've known me, certainly. That's correct. I've talked about it on the air even before you knew Incessantly. me. Incessantly. Yes. Yes. Damn it. It's because I still don't have one. Thanks for reminding me that... Somebody we know and love and care for and cares for us, allegedly, went out and got you the thing right. she knew I wanted. My birthday. And you've probably never even used it. I have. Once. Delicious. One time. I make Grand Marnier margaritas, buddy. I don't mess around. They're good. I don't get a text when that happens. I'd like, you I would drive been, over there to have a margarita. You've been to my house when it's the green room before the listener event. That's it. And one opening day. Yeah, I think that's true. And it was a green room for the CP. But we also live so far apart. Let's be fair. Yes. We you live, live in Georgia. I, well, I live in a nice neighborhood. And that's just, what are you going to do? I live in the metropolitan <laughs> area of Tallahassee. <laughs> All right. That's enough. Good music. There you go. Good work out of you, Tom. Good work, Matthew. Be well, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. And by the way, happy graduation, everybody. That's I forget that goes on. I've been so far removed from school forever. Now get the hell out of town, everybody. Congratulations to Markeith Cromarty, who has been an intern Absolutely. here for some time. Absolutely. Congratulations. Been a badass Markeith. for us. Yeah. Happy for him. That's good stuff. Good. I'm happy for all of you. Good job. All right. Be well. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Talk to you on Monday.